Broadcasting live from the Treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona. It's Not Conscious. With Mark Poles and Chris Woodsy Peralta. From the home offices in Gilbert, Arizona. Hi. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hola. Welcome to the KC. The Not Conscious. And the Sunshine Band. Buen venidos. Do a little dance. Uh, and make a little love. Get down tonight, and bro. And then get down after that. Yes, sir. I need yeah. a hammer. Not conscious. Yes. Serious topic. No. Oh, I don't know if it's serious because it's, you know, it's aliens. I don't know about all the seriousness. So what are we talking about today, sir? What's going on? Uh, uh, how are you? How, to how are you doing? Today is uh, January 6th, bro. Wednesday, January 6th. Wednesday. 2021. Yes. The roof is refalling. It's not on whatever. fire. <laughs> Let the motherfucker <laughs> burn. Uh, get the fuck out of my house. Get the, You don't like it? Get the, get the fuck out. My mom called and said there's a protest at City Hall. Like, <laughs> okay, you mean the Capitol yeah. building, Mom? Okay. <laughs> Bless your heart. George Washington is getting yelled at right now. Why? What, Mom? I don't understand. Why for? So, um, dun, dun, he's not conscious. We're dun, doing a docky, docky follow-up. We've got, a, we, we have some general interests. We have a lot of interests that are right, general. Right, we have a lot of them, and they're general. One of them happens to be, what, what's one of the big ones that we're going to talk about today, obviously? General interest? General. <laughs> Major asshole? Uh, what, what, consciousness? What, is this a trick question? Well, a, aliens, and the UFOs, and the AEPs, and the a, a tip Apes? And, a you know you um unmanned aerial phenomena uaps oh. okay you apes you you apps. i thought you said apes oh did i i'm dyslexic I, I, I think my I hearing said, is dyslexic i apologize i'm sure i said aps okay <laughs> and i'd say i'll take that but um so we've been watching some documentaries the last couple months we did uh the phenomenon phenomenon and we had another do we have another ufoe uh no oh, was that it okay but i feel like we're gonna delve a little bit into that in the next well, couple it, months, it, months or so sure because you know we're not getting any answers on earth <laughs> i can tell you that much or just from humans yeah well yeah yeah i'm sure i'm sure apes have a lot to teach us <laughs> and raccoons like how to dig well, through trash right <laughs> really and, efficient yes and what uh, i was gonna say the apes just throw poop and we don't want to. We don't want to do that. I feel like that's what we've been doing for like. Uh, well, it's figurative. Verbal poop. It's figurative poop, not literal poop. Some people, yes, but not. I. I don't do that because that's sick and wrong and terrible. It's yeah. And uh, you have to donate money when you do it to boxerlove.org. That's true. We don't talk. So about, there you go. Uh, rule one: We don't talk about fecal matter. <laughs> rule two: No fecal matter. Um, so we're on this, uh, semi-alien kick. Yeah. What are we talking about today? Today we we're talking about the documentary on the Amazon Prime, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. One, two, three, four, five, fifth! The Fifth Kind. Contact has begun. Is that the last it. part? Yes, I believe okay. that's what it was. I, I forgot the last part. Available in three offerings from Amazon. Yeah, I didn't get that. One is like rent and buy for really expensive. One is rent and buy for eh. And one is free. Which I'm very confused. There's actually yeah. a Canadian version also, because the version I sent to William didn't work in his country. So he's like, "Oh, I found the Canadian version." Oh, okay, they cool. Can, do they add a on the end of every yes, sentence? Like, a boot. Um, the aliens we, are a boot to they're invade. They're boot here. Uh, they're they're coming around the mountain. A. Eh? Eh? Yeah, they made con you, they made contact. Eh? You hosers. Yeah, you hosers. We should have prop on for this one. Right. He's got a stick. He could probably whack off a couple of aliens. Like not get, literally whack. Get. Oh, well, okay. like whack a mole, like whack like, us, like checking them, not whack them off. Well, that's what I, you said. <laughs> it's true. I'm like, that's, I mean, if, I mean, if, if, who are we to judge if they're into that? You should, know, should we share it? What? Should we share our new, our new at home prostitute service? <laughs> that's up to you, man. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to do it because it's not conscious. It's, it's time for ideas. Okay. Whore dash. W H O O R space dash and you can order all different it's like uber fox whore dash and uber fox were the two correct i believe that's correct beautiful good thing that you just brought this to my attention three minutes ago i know couldn't <laughs> help it it popped in my head today I just, whore dash it was like uh an epiphany yeah that 
uh, light bulb serendipity or uh, no. it was a serendipitous event yeah okay no, no, sure no, no. it's like the geico guy serendipity 15 minutes will oh. save you 15 percent. serendipity okay but we're going to talk about aliens and close encounters of fifth kind yeah uh would you like to go through the kinds of encounters that one can have because i believe fifth is the highest is that correct uh the way they numerical yeah way, well <laughs> Yeah, my You're importance. Welcome. Not by importance, but definitely uh, numerically, it is the highest one. Yes. Okay, you ready? Maybe. Number one. What are you doing? Something on fire? I'm looking for med my medicine. Oh no. Oh, well, we're doing this one solo, boys and girls. <laughs> the medicine's not here. Sorry, everybody. No, it's not key. Okay, number one. Close encounters of the first kind: visual sightings of an of an identified flying object seemingly less than 500 feet away okay so that's that a show it. excuse me uh, that show I, I apologize if i talked over you uh to that show an appreciable angular extension and considerable detail okay um all right this is actually called Hynix scale, by the way. Hynix scale. Yes. Okay. H Y N E K. Yeah. Off of Hynix is the guy from Project Blue Book. I think he is Alan also Heineken. the co owner of Heineken. Yes. Alan Heineken. Yeah. <laughs> Hynix. H Y N E K I N. Heineken is, are the children's beer. Which do not confuse with the Heineken maneuver. Yes. That's the Heineken so maneuver is where you drink where two at a time until no. you can't breathe anymore. The, like the, and then someone, right. Someone has to knock the bottles out of your hand. Yeah. That's the Heineken maneuver. Yeah. Right, the Heineken maneuver. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that? Yes. And then, and then Heineken are the children of Heineck. Yes. Correct. They're the Heineken. Like Jack's son. Yes. Jack's Jefferson. Son. Yes. Excellent. Close encounters of the second kind. Okay. So visual oh, within 500 feet and detail. Yes, sir. Now, is that visual as in, can it be on a medium like film or does it have, is it just the person, a personal? Uh, Dickipedia just states visual sighting. Okay. Does not state the... The how and the wh the why. So it could where. be it could be captured via probably video or picture or a still or just a eyewitness account. I well, would assume. Yeah, all those are visual, okay. so I believe yeah. you would be correct. Okay, I just want to be clear because some cool. some some different scales that aren't Heineck related would have like ones of video, like an actual yes, like log correct. where you have not just eyewitness accounts, you have video or film or audio yes. or some other a still picture right. versus a video versus an eyewitness versus etc all right number two number two close encounters of the second kind dose a ufo event in which physical effect is alleged this can be interference in the functioning of a vehicle or electronic device animals reacting a psychological effect such as paralysis or heat and discomfort in the witness or some physical trace like impressions in the ground, scorched or otherwise affected ve vegetation, or a chemical trace. So I assume that I, a crop circle, right? Yeah. Would be logical to me. Crop circle, landing marks, uh, turning off the nuclear silos would be because yeah. that was a direct effect of them, right? An interaction. It was an electronic interaction yes. that turned them off. Oh, and okay. I may regret saying this, but in Close Encounters of the Third Kind in 1977, Richard Dreyfus's truck turned off when the UFO flew over him. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Richard Dreyfus. Richard Dreyfus. <laughs> I hate this, you so It was much. well before my Mr. Holland's opus opening. They need a bigger boat. Uh, also, that was the same year. Also Spielberg, yeah. 77. But were they both? Was Jaws and Close Encounters yeah. in 77? Or was Jaws 76? Uh, it's right around there. Up. I'm don't don't. It's okay. God We're still it. talking. We don't fucking stop just because we're looking shit up, bro. Tell us about the third. Can I go? Yeah, you can. Close encounters of the third kind. UFO encounters in which an animated entity is present. These include humanoids, robots, and humans who seem to be occupants or pilots of a UFO. Okay, so, so let's go back to phenomenon when we broke that phenomenon. down, right? The first one was the visual sightings, the the pictures of the craft. The second was they turned off the silos. Yeah. The third one would have been that that one in New Mexico yeah, where that where police officer said he said he saw the children. 
Yes, right? that too. That would be the yes, third kind correct, now, because now you're seeing this being. The footprint would have been the second kind, I think, just like to your point, because it's an indentation or a mark left behind. Yes. Okay, so now we're, I'm just using that because we did do a phenomenon and people have listened to us. and you know, oh, Two or to, three, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's four about, sir? Four close encounters of the fourth kind is a UFO event in which a human is abducted by a UFO or its occupants. This type was not included in Hynek's original Close Encounters scale. Interesting. So it stopped with three, and that's why the movie in 77 was Close Encounters of the Third, third kind. kind. And Jaws was 75. So, so there is a side note. Uh, Hynek's associate Jacques Vallée argued in the Journal of Scientific Exploration that the fourth kind should refer to cases when witnesses experienced a transformation of their sense of reality. Okay. So as also to include non-abduction cases where absurd, hallucinatory, or dreamlike events are associated with UFO encounters. Is Jacques Vallée the guy who's, who was also in Close Encounters and was the UN guy and all that from I the believe phenomena? that is correct, okay. yeah. yeah. I agree. I think that's what it was as well. So a lot of it we, tends we, to be right around this close that movie because it's just we're talking about the fifth kind obviously it yeah. stopped at three when they came out little alien did you ever oh my God. There's, of which, there's there's actually seven on the list and okay. i didn't know that i stopped at five when i looked it oh, up today shit. well let's what's <laughs> number what's number five number five close encounters of the fifth kind is a ufo event that involves direct communication between aliens and humans this type of close encounter was named by ufo stephen greer c C SETI group, yeah, C S E T I group, right? yep. and is described as bilateral contact experiences through consciousness, voluntary, and proactive human initiated cooperation communication with extraterrestrial intelligence. Right. And Greer is the gentleman who made this documentary. Yes, that's so correct. he's the gentleman who's in who came the, up the with bespectable, the fifth kind. Right. The bespectable bespectacled gentleman. He wears glasses? Yes. Okay. Bespectacled. It's way better. It sounds way smarter when you don't- I never heard that term, bro. When you don't butcher bespectacled, it <laughs> sounds way better. But when you say it like I say it, you sound dumb. Um, yeah, so it's this guy. And he had a personal encounter and all that stuff. So CSETI is some uh, center for the study of extra- Center for the study of extraterrestrial intelligentsia. What's number? Okay, so that he stopped at five now. Now Wiki added two. Uh, yeah. So give us give us those two. We're not. We're obviously we're not going to delve deep into those because I don't even know. What well, they are. uh, we might. Number six. Is one where you pilot the fucking UFO? Because oh, that's that's sixteen. <laughs> no, no, Nineteen. Yeah, when they let Close you. Encounters. Hey, bro, do you want to drive? <laughs> Close encounters of the nineteenth kind. You get, the, you get the stick. That's reserved for George Jetson. Close encounters of the sixth kind. Death of a human or animal associated with a UFO sighting, though this could be considered a more severe example of second kind encounter. Yeah, so it's like uh, cattle mutilation, things like cattle that. mutilation. Oh no, that's no, sorry. Is cattle that, decapitation is a horrible metal band. Oh, huh, bro, <laughs> bro, you and your goddamn metals. Also, pig is destroyer. It, is there a song that's that's at all cattle mutilation? There's got to be some mutilation. Oh, of course. I, I don't mind. know. I I just. You, you think a lot of heavy metal people order from Hordash? Or uh, yeah, Uber all of us. <laughs> Speaking of Hordash and Uber fucks, close encounters of the seventh kind. Uh, uh, are you fucking serious? No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Here we go. You ready? Jesus. Wait for it. Close encounters of the seventh kind. Alien Hordash. Beautiful. The creation of a human slash alien hybrid, either by sexual reproduction or or by artificial scientific methods. So that's probably like Uber XL, where you get the alien and, you know, and something happens. Hey. Well, that's the one without the body parts. They're the eunuchs in the middle because they, the test tube babies. Test tube baby. Because they, they don't actually procreate anymore. They don't even need the body parts. Right. I feel like over time that's gone. That's sad. But, um, is it, so this is like the test tube baby, like, so seven is making a hybrid, but like, like we have that fucking technology or they would obviously. Be I, I don't know, dude, but that's what this says. I've never heard of this. Me neither. Kind, I'm, so yeah. I'm looking for a seventh kind documentary. Uh, uh, okay. 
It's I mean, I feel like we're Pornhub. alien. Whore dash, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're stopping at five. Yes. Okay. That That is where Stephen M. Greer comes in. Dr. Stephen yes. M. Greer. So tell us about this gentleman, sir. Oh, as you take a sip of soda pop. Excuse me. Uh, no, Dr. that's my Greer, a medical doctor, and he walked away from his medical career to pursue the, this is dumb, to pursue the pursuit. <laughs> you're welcome. Bro. Yes. I'm just, no. Just, you're Pers- just, are you disgusted with me right now? No, never disgust. I'm always I, You know, one myself. thing that you liked, I need to tell you, I am bespectacled. You are bespectacled. Boing. I'm despectacled Whoa. right now. Un- it's like, it's like being shelled and deshelled. Yes. Shelled fucking nuts still have the shell on them. That's why they're shelled. You, you deshelled nuts do not have shells on them. Let's not talk about these nuts, bro. These nuts. And I, may I make a quick, yes. well, no, a quick correction about Stephen M. Greer. No, we're not going to go down the D's okay, nuts, Robin. Go. We're going to go down the Stephen M. Greer. Route. Isn't he a doctor of like mathematician, not a medical doctor? He said doctor. he walked away from his medical career. I thought he said his mathematical career. You need to look that up, bro. I watched it three times and I still didn't even get it. While you're looking that up, I will continue with the story. Oh, please. Uh, he had a near-death experience at the age of 17 and had a conscious awakening, I guess you could say. And ever since that point, he's now in his 50s. Ever since then, he's dedicated himself to meditation and the pursuit of consciousness and the thought that it's possible to contact extraterrestrial life with human consciousness. He was a physician. A physician. So that's your doctor. You're, so correct. You you're, are, you you're, dude, point one nothing. You're welcome, Christopher. Yes. Secondly, yes. Didn't he have a an abduction experience as a child, not as an adult? Remember, because he said yeah, he, he not saw the same ship that he saw. Yeah, he, he saw heard them something talk to him. when he was like seven okay. or eight. Right. Yes. Okay. So I'm just yes. Just want to be clear that it was an abduction. There was an encounter of some sort in his early childhood. Yes. That I feel like at least started that first domino to be tipped over. Uh, uh, yeah. And then he went, uh, went about his real life and then probably came back, circled yeah. back around to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So um, what'd you think of this gentleman? Uh, we've seen him on, he was on the phenomenon, was he not? He was, I think Greer was on there in spits, drips and drabs. I, I think you're right, but I think it was very brief. It was. Um, Cause they were really looking at a lot of the stories in phenomenon. Um, and, but he did do the unacknowledged doc, yeah, I which I have. Okay. I've seen that one as well. How is that good? Um, I would ask his name was psycho about it. Um, Steven Tyler was on Joe Rogan. And yeah. He was like, did you hear the way he said it? You have to yeah. watch it. No, I'm good. Um, it's worth a watch, but you and I, even though we're avid fans of UFOs and aliens and all that stuff, and we just are really curious about the world as a whole, right? You and I still vet things a little more than the lay person. Yes. So I would go into unacknowledged just being open-minded, but be, you know, with a critical eye, like we always do, because it's, I think it's always important to question everything. Yeah. Fair enough. So I, I would agree. Continue. So tell us about this. Uh, which part? This guy. What, uh, where are we starting with? You took the notes, bro. Cause last time we took notes, the fucking podcast was as long as a goddamn documentary. So I'm, I stepped away from note taking and just watched it three times so I could. Okay. <laughs> the, the, um, the documentary in my perception was it had two parts. Part one, which was about a third of the show. It's less than two hours. A third of the, sh- the first third of the show was addressing the entire thing is less than two hours, not just yeah, the yeah. first part. Yes, I'm sorry. The entire show is two hours. Is basically. less than two hours, hour yeah. 58 or something stupid. So the first third or so is about world government organizations covering up UFO encounters for 80 years uh, back into World War II. So it also talked about how the president multiple presidents, not just the current president, multiple presidents and the Congress are not aware of and have no control over black op programs and UFO research programs. And they're completely 
I would I don't want to say off the books, but the president and the Congress have no knowledge and no control over those organizations. Well, it's funny you say that because it's not funny at all. It's hilarious. Can hilarious. you see how much I'm laughing? A lot. Go. Um, <laughs> it is. It's curiouser and curiouser. Do you remember the Mitch McConnell? Was it Mitch McConnell or the other guy? Reed? Harry Reed in Phenomenon? Yeah. Talked about earmarking money aside, but he had to do. He didn't do it on the books, right? Um, he even pulled money aside, and he is part of the system. He is part of Congress. These black op programs, though, this is what we have to be careful about. The black op programs are not just UFO based. They're, oh, correct. There are a there are myriad black op programs. Yes. And one of the things that I got from that, I'm sure we'll bring up, is the CIA's involvement domestically. Because the CIA, according to the National Security Act of like 1947 or something, correct, there should be zero CIA at all on on home grand homeland ground. Like there should be no covert operations done by the CIA in the United States. The FBI is in charge of the United States. It's the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Oh, okay. That is one of the things, and I don't. I didn't just know the that. look on your face I tells didn't know me that. Every, right. A lot of people do not know this. The CIA does. They sell drugs to make to fund their fucking wars. Yeah. Afghanistan is the highest producer of poppy in the world. But you know when that started? After we secured it. Just FYI. Poppy fields skyrocketed. Is that okay? Well. Is that I mean, why Russia invaded Afghanistan? No, that's before. Right. We, we're well, talking about since like no, 2010, okay. 12 okay. or so. Okay. All of a sudden, these poppy fields started showing up. Okay. And they were being protected by mili yeah. U.S. military from what yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I've read some things. Now, yeah, once they, again, we've read it all. But hearing this guy corroborate the same Something that you've read before. Yes. Something right. I've okay. seen before. And I, this, the black ops stuff does concern me. And not just on a UFO side. On all of it. Yes. So Absol anyway. yeah, in, yes, on anything that's off the books that I mean, but that also good. This is not part of the podcast, but that also goes to the question that you've said before. Is it the price of freedom? What yeah. and what what are we willing? To, what are Americans willing to pay? I think we're going to talk to, about to do that. that because this is important because the, the if there is an alien presence and if there is an intelligence, we'd rather be their friend than their foe. I agree with that. Right? I mean, and we're coming, you know, they're coming at it from an aggressive standpoint, which we'll talk about, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so CIA, Black Ops, and then Greer mentioned that he has briefed every president since Clinton, correct? Clinton I, on? I believe it started with Clinton. That's correct. Okay. And then what else do you have after that? Um, in 2001, that, which we, I believe we mentioned before, a bunch, they were called whistleblowers, a bunch of guys came out and stated that UFOs are real, the government's aware, of, the U.S. government is aware of it, and it's, no one, nobody cared. And that was in the phenomenon. Yes. That, they actually, but they, Greer, that's why Greer they, was actually in that group of those, yes. those people that were in the phenomenon part that came out forward and said, here's all the data we have many generals in high positions, a lot of people talking about the nuclear capabilities being shut off at that point, many yeah. visitations, the Bob Lazar stuff, all of that stuff gets thrown out there. Yes. To your point. Yes. Uh, after that, in 2017, both the CIA and the FBI released previous top secret information to the world that they are aware of UFOs and they've known about it for 75 years. And we talked about it in that little article, the, they even ha they claim to have vehicles. Yes. Not of this earth. Well, that's, that was said in both the phenomenon, uh, show. What was that on? Doc. It was, was a that on it was Amazon also on, Prime? Yeah. You okay. rented that one. That one we had to rent. Yes. Right. Okay. That, that show, as well as this mentioned that is also, which I found interesting that they, they crossed over. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's the thing about this is phenomenon and this are similar, but they're not yes. in a weird way. Well, like, correct. phenomenon is like an exposure of them existing or yes. the sightings only, right? Um, where that comes in is some of those big players that are that phenomenon talks about. We were t we were told to watch phenomenon from one of the main players. Yeah, right, right. right. And that main player 
almost seems to be an antagonist to this Greer guy in this one because he talks about them possibly being threats. Correct. I don't want to give too much away because we don't know what we're going to have going down the road, but that's the plan. Yeah, I agree. Um, That's the thought, right? Some of these big players on the one side who expose it in the first place. Yes. Greer has also rubbed shoulders with them or rubbed elbows with or whatever, but he also, there's a little bit of a friction because it's the intent of the reason for wanting the exposure Mm -hmm. one side sees it like threatening possibly right the other side uh, obviously Greer sees it differently okay Uh, yeah I agree so we go from the uh, Pentagon CIA 75 years they even have what those documents hidden in plain sight on their website about you know how important those UFOs are and stuff like that. yes correct Uh, the the main the main part about the first third of the show was that the gov- world governments paint the picture of extraterrestrial life being a threat. That's basically the summarization of the first 40 minutes or so. Right. And it's, uh, it's specifically U S because it's U S based. Like we're the ones calling a threat. If you notice it's all the American government programs that a tip and all the other ones that were made. Yeah. Right? CIA, the, FBI. Right, the, right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it, it is U S centric or American based. Because I don't know if the glo- I don't know what the global feeling of it is. I just know that in the United States, the powers that be are scared or, or have painted UFOs as a threat. Which leads me to my point about the idea that was brought up about their wanting to be a one world government and how it would be easier to battle these evil extraterrestrials if we were ruled by one government as a human race, as a, as a earth, right. Which I find disturbing. We've heard of new world order. We've heard of one world order. Reagan, even in the UN said, he's like, well, in 19, in the eighties, Well, I can only think (laughs) if we had a threat, how much the Americans and the United and the world would come together and fight this atrocity. That was terrible. It wasn't bad. Go back to your Dreyfus. Tear down this wall, bro. <laughs> um, Mr. Gorbachev. Mr. Gorbachev. Uh, yeah, so even he, and it's funny because Greer's like in his naivete or the yeah. the, the lawyer. And I yes, forget the lawyer's the, yeah, name. Yeah, the dude with the white hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the lawyer, this white haired curly guy, beautiful locks of hair, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's gorgeous. But his, his, his hair doesn't match his eyebrows. It really freaks me out. Uh, or his eyebrows don't match his hair because they're not gray. Carpet don't match the No, that's... Oh, hey now. That's the carpet. These are grapes. <laughs> this is the oh, these are shoot. curtains. I don't know, fucking know. Hardwood floors, bro. Oh, what? Uh, but uh, he was like on the. He had who were some of his legal battles that he fought, like yeah, for the freedoms been, of he of had information been, and things like that. He had been working with Freedom of Information Act since 1972. Yeah. So it's obviously that's so he's an activist. Yes, uh, correct, and a smart guy, but. You know, you start going like, obviously, these two gentlemen have an idea. How far has it consumed them to the point of like tinfoil time? Yeah. Right. That's just the question. The blinders are on is what you're saying. Yeah. Which I I did have that thought as well is, is that would be that happened. That's human nature, right? Is to you believe something so much that it's become your truth. I will say that since we started the podcast. Even more so than before we started the podcast, which I don't even know if it was possible, but it, it is. Um, how much I get in that, I find myself going, this is a conspiracy. Wait, take a pump the fucking brakes for a second. Right. Like, I have to vet my vetting Ugh. because it's kind of biased now because we're looking for inconsistencies. We're looking for the problems, right? Well, we always were. Right, but when we really look like this and really focus because we're sharing this with the world. Well, and we're reading more than we were before and researching and talking to people. Yeah, so I see your point. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Anyway, so go ahead. Um, one of my main points about the first third was the connection between the world governments and the world media organizations and not just the the news, but the radio, the new, the television news, but the radio mainstream media. Yeah. And newspapers and how they all work together to have an, it's, I see it as a united front against the rest of humanity so that 
they can show any extraterrestrial encounters as a threat. We just came off of our conversation with Charles Thompson. Yes. And in that, he went to a, he went to a show where someone was cheered. And right. the news, every newspaper the next day, people were like either texting or messaging him going, sorry, you had to go to that yesterday. He's like, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah, guy gets booed off stage. And he's like, uh, that didn't happen. I was, uh, I was there, you know, you know what it reminds me of? I wanted to bring it up with Charles, but I don't know if he saw it, but I know you saw it. The beginning of the running man. Food ride in progress. We must stop these people. Gun them down. No, I will not go against my people. Ah, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You remember the beginning of the running man? So beginning of the running man, he's a a helicopter pilot. They're coming into a food riot. It's the future and everybody's fighting. Yeah. And they're like, take him out. And he goes, no, I refuse. And they grab him and they hold him back and then they zap him. And that's why, how he goes to jail. But then they redid the footage. Remember they recut the footage to make it look like he was the one who was the rogue guy. Who's the asshole. And it, it, it reminds me exactly of that. And I'm like, that sounds like, uh, fuck, that's scary. Remember, remember the 5th of November, bro. Yeah, there's some, yeah, definitely, definitely V for Vendetta style. Yes. Stuff. So the question I have for you, Chuck Mark, is why would the mainstream media and, and world government organizations want to paint the picture of non earthlings as a threat to humans? Uh, this is my this is my only my yeah, own idea you. right yeah. my own opinion yeah. not anyone else's this is just for me mainstream media is controlled by the haves yeah so they just pay the mainstream mainstream media is just a puppet or a trumpet for them so basically mainstream media gets paid off okay okay yes right yes so they're getting incentivized to do this yeah they're I don't know if they agree with it okay but even with the Charles conversation, he claimed that Rupert Murdoch, we all know who Rupert Murdoch is, the Fox News, yeah, the Washington Post, correct? Is it Washington know. Post or the or the Daily Mirror, whatever it was. His I think it's Washington Post and obviously Fox okay. News. Hold on. Don't 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 wave me at don't waggle. I asked the wrong question. Go no, ahead. you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. He said, make it up or only negative, right? He's yes. he's a have. Yeah. He's telling them because he owns them. So I understand. The mainstream media is just owned by the people that want it. Okay. That want the control. So I, I apologize for my question. Why? I'm so terrible. I'm a worst. Why are you sorry for your question? Check mark. I'm a terrible interviewer. So let me revise my question. Why do the haves want to paint? I hate using this expression three times now. Why do the haves want to show extraterrestrial beings to humans as being a threat? Why is because they want to keep control, in my opinion. Control over the humans. Over the humans, because they control that. This is their playground, right? They own it now. If a third party comes in and takes over, then they don't have control anymore. Of course, it's competition. Yeah, it's competition. What do you think it is? You tell me. You tell me what you think. Uh, I put... Control question mark in my notes, not check mark question mark. You Jack, that was mark. a that was a that was not a intended pun. I apologize. So I I put two things. One is it is it control? It is it is it having inciting fear and panic among the masses for fear and control reasons? Is it that simple? I think they're using the fear and control to keep control or they're using the fear to keep control. So it it's, they're using our emotions to keep their control. Yes. That's all. It's not like the control leads to the negative. I think they're creating that negativity so they can keep control. Which I find ironic because they're using fear to keep control. But the last watching this and reading a couple other articles and thinking about it, it appears to me that the haves are terrified to lose control. They're more fearful of losing control than we are living our daily lives with the fear of the media and blah and all the garbage that spit out at us through 
television, movies, social media, blah, 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 through everything like that, the fear that's come down on the normal humans is less than the fear the haves have of losing control. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's that was a long, sorry. In my opinion, I'm not saying that they orchestrate every occurrence or every event of things. But if, but we would be very naive to think that in today, on January 6th, in the, in the world of SARS CoV 2, they're not using that in some way of course. as in it to take advantage of the situation. They may not have created the situation, but they certainly are using it to controls by keeping us locked down or keeping us with masks on or keeping us from each other or keeping us making us starting to go stir crazy in an election year personally uh, for the United States, for example. And look at what happened. Mayhem. Uh, it definitely was an atypical year. Let's go. There. Atypical. <laughs> I don't know another way to say it. Like, I think I feel like I don't want to keep reviving, reviving the horse and beating it, but yeah, it's, it's all, it's, it seems to be all control based. My second point regarding that is since since the dawn of movies with um, War of the Worlds in 1939, 1938, both uh, both the, the radio and the and the movie, and then every single okay, not every single, but the majority of extraterrestrial movies after that are aliens are bad. Aliens are a threat. I, uh, Independence Day. So, yeah, like Welcome to Earth. Thank you. Uh, ex there's very few that, uh, the aliens aren't territorial and dominant and badasses. Well, heck, l let's just go past close encounters. Let's go to, let's go to Star Wars alone. It's a galaxy far, far away. And there are warring people. They're aliens the, subliminally. You don't think of them as aliens, the, well, but I just gave you in a little of epiphany, right? Like, holy shit. They're well, telling it's us called that, Star Wars, right? So. But I'm just saying they're an aggressive species. You mean the Empire? Or well, all of them? All of them. Rebel, well, the Empire's trying to hold on. The Rebels are fighting to, yeah, so to get it. Yeah, it's the same shit, yeah. Right, and then when they take it, like if you watch The Mandalorian, you're watching the Rebels controlling things. It's not necessarily better, is it? It's just it's a different, different form of control, right? Yeah, right, In right, a right, weird right, way. Right. So the, the question is, with all these movies and the mainstream nature of non-human life in our daily lives well, on television and you know v and battlestar galactica and all these tv shows and movies that are constantly coming out why is it well it's funny because battlestar is not really an alien movie it's our own humanity well, against us yeah i'm you're, just saying, you're right you're right no you're right but the humans it is created the cylons i get i understand but Sorry. they they definitely are an alien race in a weird way that well, they're not homo sapien yeah they are hybrid machine right. They're an intelligence that's yes. not human. Yes. For sure. So the question is, are are extraterrestrials hiding in plain sight? Because A, are they B, is it these movies and television shows, etc., are are humans being prepared for something? What can you define what you mean by hiding in plain sight? Uh there's aliens that live among us, and this is it's the dumbest thing I'm going to ever say. The, there's aliens living among us, and we just don't know it. And there, and the the Habs that control the media are producing movies to prep us so that when an alien steps out of the QT, we don't all freak out. Two things. Yes. One. Um, the reason I ask you to clarify is because I know it's. <laughs> I I know I'm. I look at the world differently. I feel like some of us are aliens that don't know it. Possibly. Yeah. I think some of humanity could potentially be, have alien in itself outside of the whole, we're all from, you know, the big bang bullshit. I'm talking like an actual alien could have seeded the human race. For example, there are, there are yeah. thoughts of that. Right. So there could be a programmed human that doesn't even know they're a fucking alien. For example, and then when they go to sleep, somehow it gets uploaded into, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, or whatever. It's just weird shit, right? Well, like, anything's like possible. That. Right. Anything's like that's possible. Um, are Do I think that there are definitely known aliens that came here and are hiding among us? I have not seen 
compelling data, information, or evidence to support that. Doesn't mean it's not true, but I use this. Our visual, our eyes, our ear, our senses are actually very basic. We can't see infrared. We can only see a certain color spectrum, very limited color range. Like a, a small percentage of the color spectrum. A percentage of a percentage, yeah, right? Yeah. We can only hear a percentage of a percentage of the audio frequencies that are out there, right? Who's to say that a ship isn't like literally right here and we can't see it or sense it because it's outside of our audio and visual range? How do we know? And we can't sense it because it's in a phased thing or whatever, right? It's just about senses and knowing whether it's there. Yeah. I understand. So I what are your thoughts on that about living among us and stuff? I don't know, dude. Okay. I think more importantly is what are we being prepared for? Are they, are the movies and the TV shows preparing human humanity for something? If so, what? Yeah. Part two of that, right? Uh, is part two of your question. Um, yes. If they want to keep control if I were a person who want to keep control, I would continue this clandestine bullshit. I wouldn't say that we have aliens. I wouldn't say that to prepare us because I want to keep control. I'd be like, you don't know what they are. I know what they are. They're dangerous to you. Right? You mean giving the illusion that the haves are protecting us? Correct. Okay. Right? So when... Okay. When the Pentagon, okay. remember the Pentagon said they have vehicles now this or not the CIA and the Pentagon, I think is more of a, not Military? a covert. Yeah. But not a covert organization as much as the CIA, right? Isn't it part of, is the, is the Pentagon no, they're separate, right? Is the Pentagon owned by the CIA or is it, it's multiple it's military, military things. It's only, right. mil yeah. But the military isn't the clandestine the military isn't black ops. That is actually the government. So when they, but the military is part of the government. Right, that's my point. The military is part of the government. The CIA works outside of the government. So when the military has a thing that says we have vehicles, whatever, I think that's them prepping us. I think that's them. For what? For the arrival, for the exposure of the truth. So that when they do show up, we don't jump out of buildings and fucking start riots and go crazy. To your point. However, there's two piece, there's two people holding information. One is the government, whatever data they have. And then the other one's the black ops groups that don't, I don't think the black ops people want you to know, you know, shit, but I do think that the, the United States government is slowly dripping information to let us know. Right. But it's the problem isn't, uh, isn't that it's the black ops people, right? It's the, it's the clandestine groups and what, you know how sad it is. Did you see the thing with Ben, Ben Affleck yes. on there? He said a really smart thing and then I watch him on other stuff and he's not so smart. So I can't I can't even use him as like a supporting thing for what Just he Just pretend to say. it wasn't him. Okay, done. And then what did he say? Tell us. I think he said it I like to think that CIA is in movies because it's funny that the movie industry and the black ops industry are both trying to convince us what doesn't exist to exist. Right. In movies, they use CGI to show us that these things exist. And in the real world, they're showing us they're trying to hide things that exist to show us that they don't exist. It was a very interesting statement, I thought. I thought he said the CIA has infiltrated Hollywood. Yeah, he did. Because he's saying basically what you said. Right. Because the CIA and Hollywood are basically both trying to convince you of something that isn't is or isn't there. Just in different ways, complete 180 ways. Yeah. Right? Yeah. CIA is telling trying to tell you what is isn't. And movies are telling you what isn't is. Whoa. With sci-fi. I, I get it. Okay. Okay. I yeah, I, I get it. Your That's, eyes. No, but me. I was like, dude. Whoa. Keep it. Keep it on you, man. <laughs> keep it on you. All right. So. That's all I have. So the first part. So tell me, tell me your thoughts on all of those things, because you had some excellent questions, but I'd love to hear your opinions on that, these things. I I really struggle with. A lot of that because I want to believe the best in people and I, uh, it's just another, it's another notch in the bedpost for lack of a better description about how, if this is true, the, the truth is not only being suppressed, but manipulated and the truth is not the truth. The truth is being spit out as lies. Does that answer your question? 
It does. The bigger point of this, though, is like, it's kind of like the eugenics question. The idea of protecting the sovereignty of the United States is a great idea. But yeah. the real patriotic ones that are really trying to protect the United States do not have a line that they need to cross. There is no line to cross. They will do whatever they deem necessary to protect the sovereignty of the United States. And I think it's those people that are dangerous because I think they're just as ideal idealistic as say a politician or other ideas, right? So th because of their ideals or ideology, they're really going out of their way. They're doing bad things, but they don't think they're doing bad things. They think they're doing the greater good. The question is, who gets to decide what the greater good is, right? Yeah. Just like in eugenics. Like, yes, yes. Who gets to decide who gets to move on? Well, who gets to decide what information we get? Same, same type of thing in that respect. I'm thinking. I see your Think eyebrows. You, Calm down. Think on you. I, <laughs> uh, it, it bothers me because I don't know. I, I literally don't. I told a friend of mine. I think I told my cousin a couple days ago. I literally don't know what to believe anymore. Then uh, I talked to Will, Canada Will, about, about this documentary. And I he said, what do you think? I said, I literally think anything is now possible. So not as minute as a possibility it may be, it's still possible. It may be, you know, dot nineteen zeros one, but that's still possible. So it's still possible that the the world media outlets and the world government organizations are manipulating the truth regarding extraterrestrials to all of mankind, humankind. I I would agree 100%. I believe that is what's happening. Um, but that's an opinion. I right. Don't, See, I don't, I, I don't know what's happening. That's the thing. But, I literally but, can't believe anything right. anymore. Well, it's my opinion that that's happening. Yes. I, but to your point, <sighs> poop. We're on we're on the social media platforms, correct? Yeah. You have one one person saying one, one person saying zero. This person says it's five, and that person says it's ten. And then I what's, say it's blue. What's the answer? Right. What's the <laughs> What's the answer? Like uh, I H. don't fucking know. The answer is H. Right. It's a silent, like, do, do, it's a silent pterodactyl. Silent H, bro. But Timothy the pterodactyl yes. is silent. But is that I mean that's where we're at, right? It's hard you can't vet anything anymore cuz you can overlay sounds now, you can edit, you can do so many things with today's technology that we didn't have. you and I can do it. Stop it. I mean, think about us with a little bit of money no. how, how much danger or damage we could cause now and it comes back to the question that you asked me remember about we know to protect the freedoms of the united states the united states does some really shady some pretty shady shit putting people in power taking people out of power drone strikes on generals bombings you know things banana like republics that. assassinations banana republics coups mm -hmm. you know the guy manuel manuel noriega the guy who we took out from Gren not Granada, the uh, Panama was the guy we put in. Remember? Of course that's when, what happened. Right. Bush one comes in. I think they, they invaded and four American soldiers died to get him out of Panama. And it's like, didn't, didn't we, didn't we put him there? Who, who, who how do we get a Hussein? Didn't we put Hussein in power? Yeah. Didn't we give him Iran Contra and all that stuff? Like think about what we've done thinking that we have the right answer. And in hindsight, I've not seen us have it right once. So that's a little scary. That's more scary to me. Is that who's in control of making the decisions of what's right and wrong? Yeah. And if and if we need to look to someone then then it sh then it's wrong cuz it should be for all, right? It should be for all, not just for an, a small portion of the elites or whoever. The haves. The haves. So that's the first third of the show. <laughs> All right. The last two thirds was about the cosmic consciousness or the way Dr. Greer believes humanity can use their own consciousness to communicate with extraterrestrials. 
Check we are called we are called not conscious, correct? Yeah, uh, a, we are. There was a reason we we can't. There's a you. reason I came up with that idea is because I had an experience that was otherworldly, it, I, or it definitely wasn't earthly or whatever. I don't know, or humanly or whatever the fuck it was in this out of body. Well, it was a precognitive vision, right? So it was a psychic uh, event um, that made me question everything all over again, right? It knocked me conscious. It's a consciousness. And when he said global consciousness, it just rang so much with how we're sitting here now talking about it because that's why this started. Not because of aliens, but because of the experiences that I had when I was working on bettering myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're uh, to all the people not on video, Chris and I are having a... Uh, we're having a stare down of right. who's going to be on video. Who's going to be Hate on video. you, bro. So uh, <sighs> one point I had was that communication through ESP. Since the, the, the root idea is that regardless of your race, human, extraterrestrial, whatever planet Dr. Greer believes these creatures are from, we are related through consciousness. There's because there's one consciousness. There's the one, universe. The is, universal consciousness. Right. So or global. The way he says global consciousness, it's the same thing. Well, global consciousness thing. would be humans. Well, yeah. It's obviously it's local, state, country, globe, uh, continent, yeah. globe, right? Uh, solar system, yes. universe. It all it all just concentric circles out. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but my interpretation, <coughs> excuse me, of what he said was that. Consciousness is the language of the of the universe. Does that sound apropos? Yeah, um, it it does the way he's explaining it. But remember, we're humans. We're evolved apes that really don't know what consciousness is yet. We just don't know, right? We yes. talked about it in our pre-show, right? Is consciousness a thing? Like one plus one to the second power minus three. Add a dash of salt, a little sugar. Boom, consciousness, right? It's like a, a, like a formula, like a recipe. Is it a thing that we have to find in the brain? Or is it any, an emergent property right. of, uh, of the number of neurons? Once we get to a certain number of neurons and state of, of, of understanding of things, of knowledge, does the consciousness then spring out of that? That is, that is a very important question. And I don't, no one knows the answer to that. Right. So the, the, the implication here is that, or the assumption is that consciousness is an emergent problem. It's a thing that you, that comes out of our level of understanding and knowledge and evolution. It is not a thing in itself. It can't be pinpointed. Sense. Right. Like that's why it's all connected. Cause it's really this fluid thing. That's all kind of everywhere and nowhere. Right. Cause and I knew. Yes. Get to it. Anyway, sorry. Um, there was one gentleman that they interviewed that said it's they did verify that, and correct me if I'm wrong on this one, the consciousness is not just in the brain. They tried to find where in the brain consciousness is, and they f determined it's not just in the brain. Correct. It's more than in your brain. It is the hypothesis that it's not, that it is an outside or emergent property, right? Only because they haven't found it yet. But think about how complex the brain is. We've come eons. Yes. But we still have a lot further to go. Yes. Right? I mean, Elon just started his Neuralink. Like, let's go a little, let's go a little further before we really find out. It's my opinion also that it is an emergent pro It seems to be here. And in order to see it or to experience consciousness you have to have a level of foundation base neurons mental capacity evolution that's that's your interpretation that is my opinion okay only yeah. not not anyone else's but it there seems there tends to be a lot of evidence to to point that direction not 100% support it there's no proof of it right cuz it's my opinion i i think dolphins are very conscious and their water they're a water creature. They're not on earth. They're not, they're not, or they're not I'm sorry. They're not on land. Right. <laughs> yes. And the funny thing is like, can you tell me whether a dolphin's smart? Because the only way that you and I in our limited human world is the ability to harness fire 
is where we know civilization exists. Well, if you live in the fucking ocean, there's no way to fucking harness fire, even if you're an evolved, even if you're psychic. Well, that just shows that the, our definition of smart is not accurate. Correct. So, right? Bec so what's that to say? Who's to say that sea creatures who don't have the ability to harness fire like a land dweller would, who don't have the limbs and yeah. are just not evolved Thumbs, that way, yeah. who's to say they're not smart? I looked in the eyes of a dolphin, and I'm telling you, that thing fucking knew what's going on. I could just, I, I literally could talk to it or I just sensed it. You know, I sensed its awareness of it. Hmm. It was like a human in the water. That's all it was. It's a human with flippers and fucking <laughs> <laughs> flipper, so. flipper, bro. Right. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I, I agree that uh, dolphins are smart. What do you think about the consciousness thing? Tell me, tell me what your thoughts are. I don't rule that out. Not for a second. What's your current, what's the current information or what's the current uh, theory you're going with? Regarding dolphins? Consciousness. <laughs> no. Dolphins have high pitches. Bro. Right? And they breathe. They, they pitch high and outside. Uh, my current thought regarding consciousness. That's a fucking big question, bro. Uh, do you think it's emergent or do you think it could be a thing? Like a like a a cell or a, I believe of the that brain. it's it it is emergent because I believe that we're all related. Every every atom, every molecule is related. You know, if you the butterfly effect, right? So if I go do something, that affects everything around me, and everything around me affects me on some level it may be molecular but on some level we're all connected does that does that answer your question sure so yes well the different there's two things right one, once again consciousness being a thing or an emergent property one i want to clarify for the audience you mean thing like in your body yeah like is it like, like a an cell organ. or an organ or a piece in the brain is it one of the lobes is it a little whatever right because that's the it's question earlobe can you pinpoint where consciousness in the brain is or when we say emergent property i use temperature as the example right when you take a piece of metal and you bend it back and forth temp it gets hot but temperature isn't a thing of the system it's only a resultant of the atoms getting smushed together by me bending the metal mm -hmm. that's what we mean by emergent property i'm not mm -hmm. trying to Man's I, I know. You. I get it. I'm trying to just say it to everyone else because when we say emergent, like it's just an abstract idea. Well, so. let's just clarify the conscious, a, a human's consciousness is not somewhere in the body that you can find and remove it or repair it or, you know, zap it with chemotherapy because it's sick. Right. That's not, you can't, we don't know where it is. It's not right. the gallbladder right. for Christ's right. sake. Right. So the current school of thought is the, our ability to think and process the way we do allows us to experience consciousness it is the emergence of the high processing of our human brain because bugs don't have it they might be affected but they don't have a necessary consciousness they can't contemplate their own existence right like if you talk about the red dot experiment have you ever heard we've talked about that briefly right where you put a red dot on a on a baby and you put them in a mirror and they're looking at the red dot, they know that it's them. They're aware that they're aware that it's yeah, them with yeah, the dot. Yeah, 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 right. Whereas a deer would just be like, okay. It's a deer. Right. So that being aware of being aware is really what consciousness seems to be. Being aware of your own existence. Yeah. Well. Being aware of being aware. I know, I know it sounds so fucking redundant, but it's really that. It's knowing that you know. Kind of thing. Yes. So anyway, two thirds. Uh, we're a third in, and well, then so d which guy were you talking? Were you talking about uh, the young guy or the old guy, Russell Targ? Because I want to talk about Russell Targ. The younger guy. Okay. The the gentleman that was obsessed with the, the random, random number, number generator. Okay. Tell us about the random number generators in this thing, and then tell us about the one with that was attached to the light. I'd like to hear yeah, all the random number generators. And stuff. I didn't. I, I had a hard time grasping that and i don't think i'm that dumb so this guy set up random number generators 
and they they set them up. Was it was in the four corners of a room, something like that. Well, okay. So how a random number generator works is it it's just randomly either, generates numbers. Right, a one or a zero in this case is what they're. Let's start with the first one that they were doing. The first mental exercise, right? A one or a zero. Okay? Yeah. So it it should be given a long time. Half of them are ones. Half of them are zeros. Yes. Okay. So they put people in with this random generator and ask them to focus on one or focus on zero. So focusing on one of the directions. Yes. And they found in some of the cases, many of the cases, I don't want to. Yeah, most. However many it was, there were many because they can't say all because that's a bullshit thing. Yeah. The number generator resulted in leaning towards the direction that people consciously were thinking about. It was not 50-50. Right. As it should so have it was been. Out, right. So it was out of phase. So it leaned more towards one of the two, either a one or a zero, depending on which one they thought about. Then they did it in a lamp, and they attached a random number generator to a lamp that had a different colors. And remember, they said, think of the color. Oh, okay. And the lamp turned a color, and the and Greer, it turned red, and the yeah, Greer's like he thought red. He said he said I thought sunset. Oh right, right. right? right. He goes, oh, he's thinking sunset, which that would have a reddish yes, hue, correct? For sure, it would, right? And then they did the plant one. So basically, in a random number generator, what they did was they put the random number generator in on a light in the middle of a room, and the the thing would just revolve around the room like randomly. It would go up here, over there, whatever, right? But then they put a plant in the corner. And somehow, and I, I need to see the data on that, but somehow the plant, it, they're, they're implying that the plant guided the random number generator to feed it more light. So the light send to shine in the corner of the plant more than, than 25% than the, than the rest of the, it was going to the four corners. Was it four corners? Okay. So it was going to the plant more than 25% of the right. time, which it should have been in each corner 25% of the time. I thought it was all over and it just happened to be there more than anywhere else. That's all. In that area, in that general, but I, I, I could have mis, misheard. Yeah, I got. You. I misremembered, like uh, Clements. Yeah, of course. Clementin, Clementine. Yes, all of them. Delicious oranges, by the For way. For reals, Clementine. Good oranges. thing you can spell them. <laughs> spell oranges. Ah, oh, spell. Um, Q. Oh, I keep screwing that one up. <laughs> um, what did you? What are your thoughts about the whole thing and how that worked? It was very interesting, inc incredibly interesting. How it's it's. Because it's a random number generator, it's a mathematical machine, right? And obviously, over an extended period of time, as you said, the numbers should be dead equal, right? And when they're not, because it's being affected by human consciousness in the in the your example of the lamp and um, Dr. Greer thinking of a color or a scheme, right? So obviously, that's human consciousness can have profound effects on the world around you. I'm a little disappointed in the way the documentary shared that information because they just said it did it. I didn't, I didn't see data that shows, uh, this random number generator went, did number one. Yeah. Everyone's thinking about number one and it did it 68% of the time. I didn't, we, it just said, they just told us that it went the direction they wanted. They never explained like the actual, I, it's a documentary. I get it. They yeah. have to feed the data to you. But once again, in our world of questioning, in this world where you saying is, no, I need to vet that. So I'd love to see those actual things, right? Like, because this guy's just telling us, what, are we supposed to take my face value? Because it's it's got the word documentary at the end of it. Uh, do you know what I'm saying? Many people do. Right. But you and I don't. You and I vet everything. So I wish they would have had a little bit more uh nerdiness to it okay but yes i mean it was very generic so let's take that number generator because later in the in the show they talk about it another number generator they put a bunch of them around the, the world yeah let's go into that because we'll just get the number generator stuff out of the way and then we can move to yeah I, I they they said that they had them all over the world and then they all spiked in the number of concerns or something like that yeah. right before 9 11 was it before 9-11 or at 9-11? There, there, there was like a cohesion of a group of them before the event. Before. That was, it's very specific 
that for 9-11, it was the more it was before the first plane hit. They even said that. Now in Princess Diana case, yeah, and the crash in the is it Pan Am? No, no. it was after that. It was uh, Lockerbie, uh, whichever one it was. Well, but anyway, they had um, the death of the Pope. There are a lot right, of events right, that right. they went through that did show this trending at the event, like a global sorrow or like yes, a, but it whatever. was like a pre-sorrow. But in the 9-11, it was a pre. That's what's really interesting to me. I'm surprised they didn't dig deeper into that. They said it's almost like everything lined or like it was like an awake, like everyone like turned on, like everyone woke up to pay attention the morning before or the morning of the morning of before the first plane hit. So we've, I mean, I'm here to tell you, I've had direct personal psychic precognitive experiences. That makes sense to me that we don't even know that we know it, right? Right. Like, when did I know that I knew it? When it happened? Never before. Looking back, I probably had multiple experiences like that, but I didn't know to look for that, so I didn't see it, right? So it makes sense that we all have this pre almost like a precognitive ability in some way. So do you think that this relates to the fact that experts say we don't use 90% of our brain? Do you think that that's a correlative statement? No. Well, I feel like there's a lot of, I feel like that's a very generic statement, like defund the police. <laughs> like, I feel like it, it's nuanced, right? That we, there are probably processes in the brain that we don't know control something, but it's still being used, right? But we don't actively process more than 10% with 10% of our brain. Or is it that, experts neurologists etc don't understand 90 percent of the brain yet to be part of that i i think i think when they say the 10 percent thing i think that's memory and pre and cognition like actual thinking walking power. and shit yeah like horsepower now well, i don't think well i think those are those are the other things i'm thinking like memory um problem decision solving. making yes decision making problem solving that's that's where i feel like the 10 percent. i feel like there's a lot of things that uh are like our auto, our auto breathing, that's not, that's used by the brain, but is that something they consider as part of the 10% or is that just, y yeah, that's a good question. I know. don't know. So it is a little nuanced in the question. Um, but we obviously don't know everything the brain does true or what, or what controls what exactly all the time. True. So, uh, lastly, well, after, or are you done with the random number thing? Okay. Isn't that, isn't that what we cover? We covered them all, right? Yes. The light, the number, the, the, the lamp, the lamp and plant. the glow and the, and the world, all of the world, all over the world. Just to, to put a pin in that, um, I would like to attest that I personally feel like sometimes I am that random number generator. Cause I sent you and I have both talked about our sensing of other people's feelings yeah, and sensing of other people's emotions or whatever. So, doesn't that make sense? I mean, it makes sense to me. I don't know how it could affect a, a physical system like a computer, but I certainly know how it affects an emotional system like myself. But they're def they're saying that it does. R right. I'm not. I'm just saying I don't. I haven't had the direct experience of that. I have had the direct experience of getting when when our when our dog passed yeah. a few months ago. Yeah, yeah. I remember talking to Megzi and I right. went, I don't know why I'm crying right now, but something is really off. And he died the next day. It's like, I, yeah, you know, not, not even that I felt that cause I felt that multiple times in my life, but that, that I felt compelled to tell her that day, that one event I was told to tell, right? Like it had to be that event that I felt it. Cause if I, if I did it two weeks ago when I felt it and it, nothing would have happened for two weeks, like that's too far apart in my opinion to really co correlate the two. Yeah, I, I know. I understand. Anyway, so. Uh, what do we have next after that? Next is Dr. Emoto, the Japanese uh, gentleman that... Frozen water experiment. Yeah, and it's amazing because a friend of mine has his book and showed it to me twice in the past two months. So then I'm watching this documentary, and then there, there he is. And then they show his water crystals underneath the microscope. And I'm like, hey... I know that guy. Hey, I know his work. So what he did was 
in one case, they took two bottles of water and they took two post-it notes and on one post-it they put, they wrote love and one, this was not in the documentary, this was on the book. In one post-it they wrote hate and they put the post-it notes on the water. And over time they showed the molecular structure of the water and how the love post-it made these beautiful, amazing structures that were just gorgeous and light and beautiful. And then the one that said hate made these ugly, horrible looking figures. So how do you just the word alone has power and they showed on the show how consciousness can affect when you can affect water or liquid where you present positive thoughts to water. It creates these beautiful images to go even outside of that. I don't know. We, you and I have a list of topics. We do, uh, on our, when we're, you know, Hey, what do we want to talk about? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, Amato's on there. Oh, Um, really? Yeah. He's, he was, he's probably in the first page, if not second. Page. Okay. I, we have 11 pages of just lines of yeah, I X, Y, Z, right? Yeah. Amato's on there. I remember when I first came across that and it was early in my epiphany world, like when I'm starting to research, like dig deep into the spiritual world, I really bought into that. I pumped the brakes since I feel like it's a little too easy because they chose which crystalline to share in the picture. Oh Yeah. Who's to say the crystalline next to it was ugly and they just chose the ugly one and not a pretty one? Because you, if it was water and frozen, some of them may have, right? I'm, I'm not saying it's not a thing. I understand. I see your point. We just need that, to pump see, the brakes. I thought I was the doubting Thomas. What is going on here? It's not about doubting, man. It's about vetting. I want to confirm that that's the case. I don't do this to debunk. I do this to bunk. <laughs> We love bunking. We love bunking. I hate debunking, right? I want to believe all this stuff. However, we do need to slightly take a step back at times because I did start with that Amato book and I know exactly what you're talking about. I even took it out, checked it out of the Burton Bar library and looked at it and went through the whole page and went, wow, that's really interesting. And then I went online and I saw some other things going, people tried to recreate it and they had all different types of shapes and all different whatevers, right? And it got, even the book got crazy where like, it was something yelling. It was yes. like they had audio, correct? right? And it was and audio, it was posted, it was written, prayer, water that was prayed. Yes. Uh, prayed after was this beautiful line, lined up crystalline structure yet before the prayer, it was just like shapeless and odd and you get just molecules. Ugly. Yeah. So what are your thoughts about that? Oh, uh, first of all, in the book, they did show a picture of water subjected to heavy metal music. And I was like, Hey, that's fucked up because that's not pretty. <laughs> Secondarily, uh, you can't, I don't think you can underestimate the power of positive thought. If you can, hey man, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this job. I'm gonna do you know, I'm this I'm gonna do this. This is my goal. I can do it. Yeah, hell yeah, I can do it. Where to the point where you can convince yourself that you will do it. You you're I mean, basically you're manifesting something, right? And I don't think you can underestimate that. I agree, but Henry Ford said that, right? Whether you believe you can or can't, you're right. Yeah, there you go. Right? That's really what it yeah. is. But 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 power positive thinking and and getting yourself psyched up to do something is slightly different than an inanimate oh, thing yeah. reacting to an animate direction, right? Like me yelling or playing music. What? So water is inanimate? It's molecules, H2O. I mean, pure water is two oxygen, one hydrogen. Right, there's, zero, there's zero... There's zero... When I say life... life when I say life, it's not carbon based. It's not silica based. It doesn't interact with this environment. It just is right. That doesn't mean it doesn't have a vibration to Correct. it. Correct. That's different, but it doesn't have life per se. And what's interesting about the heavy metal stuff is I'm curious what song it was. Do you remember? <laughs> because s- some could have been, <laughs> some could have been like harmonious metal. When you hear, when you hear harmonies, the water reacts positively. Right, because it it could be a harmon harmonic thing or the message, the intent of the message. It, it, it's hard to say, right? You have to re- the experiment on its own just needs more vetting, in my opinion. 
but it's a really cool experiment. I agree. <laughs> did M show you that book? Yes. Of course she did. Uh, yeah, we talked about it several times. It's, it was, it's, the pictures are amazing. It, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, there was one that had like Hitler, it was Hitler was written on it, I think was uh, one. Something I think like Hitler that. Hitler was one written on one. It was just ugly. And then there was like love, obviously. Thank you. Gratitude. Yes. I remember just a bunch of, them. and you can go on website. Dr. Emoto has a website. It's E-M-O-T-O, I think. Dr. That's correct. E -M -O -T -O. Correct. So, well, maybe we'll put a link or I'll forget to do it, whichever one. Yeah. I think the most important thing is that the second two thirds of the show is about humans contacting aliens using thought using their consciousness yeah that's the most important that's the what the show is about is human alien contact whether it's a ship or literally an extraterrestrial standing next to somebody and they talk about vectoring and how to send how to bring them to us right with the ce5 protocols which stood for con, uh, close, close encounter encounters five, the fifth yeah. kind app so this is where let so do you let, think that's possible? Okay, let's complete this conversation because I want to, I've got some challenges with this documentary, okay. but I don't want to do it in the midst of it. I want to I do it as a segment kind of. Okay. So do I think it's possible that we can, con if consciousness works the way we're talking about in this way, it should work. When we talk, remember the quantum entanglement thing? Yes. Okay, let me take two steps back. There's an old gentleman in the show called, named Russell Targ. He's the gray-haired, skinny guy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did some ESP, and he sounds For a little bit decades, like that. For decades, yeah. He has a TED Talk. It was banned. Why? You can go online, and you can type in Russell Targ TED, TED, banned TED Talk, and there were these things called TEDx, which yes. were offshoots. TED was, what's it, franchising out the name. Yeah. So people were doing, they were calling it pseudoscience. However, it's like a 15, 18 minute, uh, thing I watched this years ago when he came on this documentary I was like so excited because if you watch that TED talk I'll put a link I will put a link for that one on there but basically he talks about how they did was he was going to he sent they had pairs of people and they sent one to a location and you know wherever it was they open up envelope they go to that location and that this person sends a signal to this person and they draw what they see or they take a picture of it and then they draw what it is and they line up the pictures. Holy fuck. Like, no joke. Was that that co-locating thing? What did they what did they call it? it was it localizing? Lo lo yes. Yeah. Uh remote viewing is, there you is go. what this was. Okay, yeah, yeah. In yeah, this yeah. case. Okay. Localizing, I think, was the Okay, no. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you're right. Basically, what we was talking about in the quantum world, right? Quantum me quantum mechanics, two protons or photons yes. or, or protons are combined and tangled you move them really far away you change the state of this one this one instantaneously changes without community there's no wire yeah there's also a website that i saw where we were uh they did a study where they were able to put a bitmap picture black and white picture on put it on this atom or uh, my molecule and it showed up on that one i mean i've got the i've got the yeah the web, and it's yeah. like legit it's like stanford or you know legit sciences here not not some guy in his fucking basement it's pretty really interesting but the russell targ one you will be convinced that that guy did it like the way the pictures that he shared and stuff if all that's true yeah yes 100 percent real and that's what that's part of my thought about remember when i i don't know if you remember when i spoke about psychic ability it's my opinion that psychic ability is because we're all entangled in some way so when you leave you have a thought that i receive because we're somehow connected. I'm tuned into that part of it. And that's why I'll text you something and you go, shit, dude, I was just thinking about that. Mid text. Because yeah. you, you were just thinking about it because I was thinking about it. Possibly. That, that's very possible, right? How, how, I don't know another way to explain it. And I can tell you that we've had enough. I've personally had enough experiences and I'm a lucid individual who's a debunker who likes to vet everything. I've had enough experience to be comfortable in saying that this stuff, some kind of psychic or whatever ability is real and I've experienced it directly. I think you experience it directly. Yeah, but that we need to, 
But psychic is part of the consciousness, in my yes, opinion. Yes, so but it, I'm it's thinking all about, kind of one. I'm think, no, I understand. I'm, I'm thinking specifically about the fact that the show showed multiple places around the world where groups of people would gather together and go into meditation and and call an alien craft to where they were. Yeah. That's some crazy shit. And that's that vectoring we talked about. Well, yeah. Right? So but, basically what they're saying, the way he was saying was you find the craft, right? You go into meditation, you then search the universe for this craft and it pings back in some kind of conscious radar. Then you slowly show it where you are and then drill it down to on the earth, right? To earth and then the state and then the city and then the, the, the town dream. and then the mountain, right? Or whatever, yeah. wherever it was. But yes, it was, if these things are real, if these, if this video and all that, all those videos are actual things, it's extremely compelling. In, Cause in theory, if we, if every organism is, tied into one consciousness then this is possible right well let let's take a weird step back no the big bang if everything came from a singularity aren't we technically all entangled in the first place yeah that which to right. me I seems mean, logical it, right that seems extremely logical that everything is because it did come from one and that's where i feel like religion didn't get it right I think the concept of a oneness is correct. I just think putting a person in charge of that oneness, like putting a figure on it or calling it a thing, is not is not the way it works. That's my opinion. That's all. Oh, I agree. But it's all correct. I think it's all connected. I think the 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 God that others see is the consciousness that you and I experience. It's just a different name. Right. It's a, a different word. Right, but but by putting a word and a label on it, you're now you're locking it into a place, right? Nietzsche said, by calling me something, you're negating everything else that I could be. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with God. But do you think that, quote unquote, uh, <laughs> do you think that? I don't know if that worked. Yeah, it was beautiful. Right. Uh, do you think that Dr. Greer has started a religion? It, well, it is. A, it's, it's a religion. It, the religion of contacting aliens with your mind. Replace God with aliens. You have a creator. Well, no, just, well, yeah, just think about it. Yeah. They seeded the earth. They're the ones Did who made they? the... Just, they, no, I'm just saying right. that's, the, that's the idea, right? So all they're doing, in my opinion, is making one label a different label. It's aliens, not God. It's the same fucking... But I don't think that aliens... I don't think they think aliens are our Lord and Savior. No, I don't. I mean, don't. that's a very different God. Correct. I, I mean, an, uh, an alien is not a God. Right, but when they, they talk... They create the universe. Right. Absolutely. It's my opinion that they are looking at it from, well, we're 100 years in our technological age about, right? Sure. 19, let's just go back to 1920. Okay. We had ships, we had planes, but they were very rudimentary and whatnot. Ships were pretty decent because we've been doing that for hundreds of years, but planes were still new. We've yes. gotten better and better. We've improved. We are now in space flight. We've done this. We've done all that in a hundred years. Imagine what we could do in a thousand. Take this exponential growth and 10 times that in an exponential way. Do it a hundred times. That's 10,000, right? Yeah. Do it a million years. We've got the, the, the universe is up to between 12 and 14 billion years old from our current understanding. The earth is 4 billion. The oldest homo erectus that we've seen is this new person uh they just unearthed her i think and she's like 4.5 million years so that's wow. a million but it's a it's an erect thing with an opposable toe Whoa. so it's still it's really interesting it, it was on rogan okay. um but the guy the guy who they discovered it you know it's remember what's lucy and the other one like yeah, yeah, the yeah weird, i remember lucy yeah it's old like a million year predates lucy wow i think it's Ar arnie i think it's sure guy, whatever, arnold whatever. yeah um, but take that now, take another civilization that doesn't blow itself up and is a million years older than us, than our current self. Yes. Because it's been around for billion. I mean, it could, it was a further civilization, right? It just was earlier. It longer to develop, right? Longer to develop. So where do you think, what do you think we could do with all that information? Yeah. So do you think, cause Dr. Greer said that the civilizations that are contacting us, that we are contacting are between 500 million and a billion 
years old. Do you think that that's accurate? I don't know the number. I know he threw numbers out, but I don't want to do that. I just well, that's wanna, what he said. I'm right. Not, but I just want to look at the lot. Is it logical? Is his Does his argument hold water? Yeah. And the answer is yes. Because what we've done in 100 years, like I said, yeah, multiply I, I by 10. Yeah, extrapolate it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. His, his philosophy can hold water, yes. I just don't know if it's true. Right? I mean, he could be f lying about all of it. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. The idea of a longer civilization than us, or older, as long as it doesn't destroy itself. And that's why I wanted to talk about Drake equation, but I think we'll do a separate on Drake. Yeah. Because Drake equation is basically the number of advanced civilizations that could possibly be out in the universe. It's more of a thought experiment than it is like an actual equation, but it's very sm interesting to look at all the different parts of the equation. Which I have not, so I would like right. to do that. Yeah, that's why hey, I'm saying. Hey, hey, hey. We're just staying on target. Shut Write up. that down. Write down. Drake. I already. It's in. Is it, it bro, on? The, okay. Just. I'm just checking. Ooh, bro. It's on one of the other. There's no Dana Holmes. I believe it's. I believe it goes. Doctor Amato. Gadget. Then gadget. Target you, gadget. No, it's. Uh, it's got Doctor Amato and then Drake equations right below it. Okay. No, it's alphabetical. So Drake then Do Emoto. Okay. I'm just kidding. I don't know. Hey. It's on there though. Um, but basically. That's what the, what they're saying is like think about how far we go as long as we don't push like have a nuclear meltdown an asteroid blow ourselves up with nuclear detonation whatever global famine war disease whatever as long as the earth and the humanity stays the way it is and advances the way it does in 50 years I mean I can't even I don't I can't fathom what we could do in 50 years Well you could you if you do the math you go in the last hundred years. We did this, where we we did this exponential rate. So Moore's the next law. fifty, yeah, in the next fifty, it's gonna extrapolate that out. Right, it does. It doubles every two years. Yeah, and but we're at a point because right. the size of the chip and the spacing yeah, between whatever. However, this is the problem. You can't even. Could you fathom a cell phone 150 years no, ago? No, no, of course right. not. Right, so even yeah. saying that we're going to get smarter, yeah, we know that. Well. But what does what does that intelligence come out in a consumer product, for example, or in a result? What is the result of that? I, I see that, and that's where I have a problem is because I can't say we're going to be smarter in 50 years. We might be more technologically advanced, which I imagine we would be. Doesn't mean we're going to be smarter. We may I have mean, the knowledge, but not the wisdom. around right now like there was 50 years ago. Right. So what's... That the S word is rough, man. But there is an overall there. There are there. Are, oh, what's the name of that one? Where the IQ as a whole has Go all on. shifted up. Oh. Even it's all shifted up, even though we still have fucking morons. Because you and the lowest is still low. Yeah, there's still a great divide between the haves and have-nots. What are you talking about? Haves and have-nots in of yeah. an intellectual. Say intellectual, okay. not IQ, because okay. IQ can be biased and whatnot. Yeah, okay. But. IQ tends to be that weird yes. thing, right? Um, we, I've, I've correlated IQ with fucking and fighting. Yeah. As a world, as a globe, fucking and fighting is down. This has nothing to do with aliens. No, but it's about intelligence. As a whole, as we've gotten more intelligent as a world, I believe the fighting and the fornicate or, and children have actually gone, the birth rate has gone down and the amount of actual fighting we we're probably in one of the most peaceful times it doesn't feel it no because of right. social media but we are correct steven Less pinker deaths steven by bullets P and shit deaths by bullets famine global pro poverty is up 20 30 percent like steven pinker has a real we should i'll put that oh on the list no he's on there too he's on he's on the list I know what is megzy cooking it's delicious do you want to know dear god are you gonna have hot roast are you gonna have it with us better what pull pork bro fuck you you want some yank? You want some yank? Pig? I would love my pork yanked or something. Hello, to the Hello. world. Would you like to have? Would you like to have pulled pork with Christopher and myself? <laughs> so um, I know these all kind of conflate, but like this thing is all. This documentary is almost an encompassing of so many different philosophies that you and I have had interest in. But it's not the just. I'm going to talk off of you right quick. It's not just the philosophies. It's the philosophies but they're all pointed to communication between humans and aliens. Well, for him, yes. Well, that's but, what the whole thing's about. No, no, that's what the documentary is about. Yeah. I'm just saying, though, but the global consciousness, these ideas, these thoughts about us growing as a civilization ourselves is also part of that whole thing. Like, how are we have the consciousness to 
bring these people in. Yeah. Right? Because he said that you're going to need 75 million people or 1% of the globe to, to, to get to that consciousness level to change everything that I don't like that answer. I don't like what he said there. I, there, there's some point I've got some real oh my issues God, with this you're documentary. You're dying to debunk some shit. I know, but I want to get through this <laughs> other stuff. So let's, let's okay. put a pin in that. Let's put a pin in the 1% because no, I do want to talk That's about it. that. No. All right. So watching the whole thing, taking the notes the way you did, what is your overall feeling of the validity of everything he says, or what parts do you, are you all in on, Someone in, not at all. I'm not at all in on some of the videos and some of the pictures. They, he says, oh, this is a alien creature, blah, 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 with blah, blah, blah. Dude, seriously? That's just the, somebody moved a flashlight and you, the exposure was left open on the camera. Dust on light. Uh, yeah, like. Um, the, the one with the arrows sticking that out. Was that weird. looked like hand-drawn. I, I'm it sorry, did. it just looked hand-drawn. It did not look structured. It did not look like a being the way they were talking about it being a being. Right, but the gentleman they were interviewing, if his story is true and what he believes, it, we don't know. Now we're in a belief. Right, no, of but course. But yes. If he believes what he saw, right? And if it's true, if that picture's real, like if yeah. it exposed the way it did, that is a very compelling picture. Yes. I mean, m many of the pictures, many of the videos are compelling, if true. The changing of direction of, say, a craft. Yeah. The the one that gets me, has always gotten me, was the NASA one. You've got this lighting, this ball that goes this way, a flash, it darts this way, and then something comes up yeah. out, of the, out of the earth. Because they were saying that w w humans shot, tried to shoot down an alien spacecraft. And he even says they the have Earth. multiple times. They, yes. And we have never, they've never attacked us. They're peace. He's making very bold claims about a civilization of which he does not 100% understand. Well, we really don't understand 100% of anything, dude. Right. But my point about this is like he's, he's assuming peaceful just because they haven't attacked, but maybe it just doesn't matter to them. Because we're not worth it? Right. Maybe we're not, or maybe we are, right? We don't. He's assuming that they think we're worth it and they're trying to protect us. But that is a very big step from a visitation or a non aggressive act. True. Right? I just feel like he's making very liberal jumps with his science in this case. You use air quotes a lot today. I know. Your, your fingers like third hurt. time. Fingers uh, hurt? You know, I got rheumatoid. I got a little RA, <laughs> rheumatoid arthritis over there. That said, I, 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 in Dr. Groot's head, I feel like he's gone down his own rabbit hole too far. That's my concern about him. That's why I asked if you thought it was a religion. Right, and that it is. However, it I never really finished is. answering your question. Am I, am I allowed to interrupt you? <laughs> I feel like an asshole. Why? I interrupt you all the time, man. Okay, so to go back to your question, what do I what am I in and what am I not in on on this documentary? I'm in on the real possibility that consciousness is a universal truth because it makes sense that we everything shares molecules, trees, rocks, humans, cars everything is a molecular structure so the idea of a universal consciousness i think is a real thing and that's the foundation of his belief his thought right the the foundation of the documentary is universal consciousness i believe that could be a, a real thing so to me that holds water which means that's a solid foundation of possibility so everything he's built on that can be real my issues with some of the pictures and videos are questionable. My now issue, I'm done. My issue with the parts you talk is I feel like he came up with the consciousness as an answer after he felt aliens were real. And I don't think, I don't think he went the right direction. It's like he had the answer and then he tried to explain the answer. I, yeah, I, I see your point. He's saying, it's my opinion that he came into this because we're finding that documentaries tend to have agendas. They're not yeah. exactly like, here's facts and just look at it. Remember, well, old yeah, it was news, definitely like, one sided. Right. He, 
it's my opinion that he goes in saying, I can contact aliens, they can come visit me, they're all peaceful, and we're making them out to be bad people, and we shouldn't. And then throwing in the consciousness as, well, we're all part of the universe, and they're noticing it. So he's he's putting a personality to the to the alien that he doesn't know exists or doesn't exist. And that's callous. Well, he that's believes not, they exist. Right, but that's not a science. That is a religion, to your point. A cult? Right. Well, I mean, a religion is a belief in, or is an organized thing of a higher power of some sort. He's making the aliens the higher power. And he we he believes or in consciousness that. is the higher power. Right, but... You know, and uses the consciousness that he's never really talked God much. He didn't talk no. God much at all. I think God came up one time in somebody's a couple, of, yeah, a couple of times, but n he did not bring that up. Correct. Correct. So, so we had to be very careful with that. Now, that all said, um, I agree with you. It's my opinion, currently, with the information that you and I have had and the experience that we had, that there is some kind of consciousness out there that we can pick up on. There's a energy something. I don't, I don't know because we picked up on it. So. It, in my opinion, it's real. Is it global, universal? I don't know the scope of it. But at least on Earth, for sure, it exists because we've had these experiences. Outside of that, though, this is where I get, this is where I get uh, a little weird. Oh, okay. I feel like Dr. Greer has, has been on the side of a lot of these people exposing these things. And the side that he's on is initially was the exposure, but now he's kind of taken his little, for lack of a better term, cult sect into, yeah, sect of it, right? Catholicism. He became Lutheran and now he's broken off of the, there, they exist and now is saying, well, they're peaceful. They're not, they're not, you know, the one sect believes that they're a threat or wants them to believe they're a threat because they're telling us what to believe, right? Like all the, government people they're saying they're they're dangerous right they're a threat to national security but he doesn't believe that it's just a different belief we have no yeah, proof it's one just, way it's or the his other. opinion correct it's his opinion now it could just be they're so fucking ahead of us that we don't matter or that they know that we that they were where we are now and they want to help us get to the next level which is also is a good theory and holds water how do you test that that's the problem with stuff like this is there's it's like we've had how many times that we said we've had ideas and whatnot, but it's untestable. So we can't say for sure there's no way to test what what we've experienced. Right. Yes. Um, I found a lot of the videos compelling. If they were real to your point. I don't know. The two the two glowing sun almost on red beach, in the beach were in North Carolina and and don't give me this his laser signal the other guy no he used a laser pointer to show where it was yes he correct. didn't signal I thought that was callous too like he was sig like now that all said this is what concerns me I okay these guys vectored him in why didn't they come closer you know exactly where they're at once you're that close wouldn't you think you'd be dialed into their consciousness directly and be like, I'll come clo even closer for you guys. Why would it be so far in the distance? Yeah, I thought that too. I think that's a good point. That's one that does concern, because you talk about vectoring them in, and I'm like, okay, well, you got them to the, to the ocean, you got them to whatever. It's like, that's in the distance. I can see the ones overhead, because they're flying overhead, probably checking out, but there are some that are really far away. What would keep, what would compel, compel, compel them to keep their distance? I don't know. F fear? Of us? Yeah. I mean, because they did say that they, he did say that governments have shot down alien yeah. spacecraft. Yeah. So is there a fear, is there an alien fear of that or not? Yeah, that's the question, right? But if there was a fear of that, once one of them was shot down, now, it's kind of weird, right? Like Stephen, Stephen Hawking made a really good point. Like when we talked about this, when a higher civilization visits a quote unquote lesser, and I've done it again, air quotes, 
Look at that. It's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be the air quote episode. Oh um, shit. When a when a higher civilization meets a lesser civilization. Yeah. How right. did it go for the lesser civilization? Right. It never goes well. Never, right? Because there's a conquest, there's an overrunning of that. It just it just does, because that's what progress does, right? It steamrolls over whatever is existing because it's bigger, better, can't be stopped. Why hasn't that happened yet? Well, why is it that that is even a question? Because the the steamrolling of smaller empires, whatever word Native you want to use. Yeah, no, I mean, for example, yeah, it goes on and on and on, right? So that's a human thing. Right. That may not be an extraterrestrial thing. Right. They may not give a shit. Right. And they, that's, they may not be a threat. And that's where the hope comes in, right? Is that we are at the lower level of consciousness currently. We're just at the beginning. And he even had that little scale of material consciousness versus global consciousness, right? Material consciousness was about us needing our money, our clothes, our food, whatever. When we get to the point. Yeah, Star Trek. Right. When we get to the point of global consciousness, those don't matter because every, but everyone's base needs need to be taken care of first. Correct. And that's not. You can't move everyone forward until everyone's at the same starting point. You can't move all together forward, right? The thing about the 1%, I think, I, I don't, there's no science of that. He said that approximately 1% of a population was sent, was 2,000 people were praying in a population of 20,000. Meditating and Meditating stuff, right? and... But praying is a, is intent. It's it's basically meditation with intent. I say I say praying for lack of a better term, but it's it's meditating with intent, which is basically what you're basically asking for things. Okay, but it's not praying in the sense of the word. No, it's not dear that Lord. We my... know it. So well, but it's it's setting an intent is I want I want peace. Yes, I want greatness. I want health. I want and happiness. Positive want... thoughts for everyone around right, them. Right. It's just what we consider. It's a what different we call kind praying. of praying. It's just not praying to. It's not praying to anyone. Right. It's just positive a, thoughts. Right. Which basically praying is setting an intention of some sort. Like I want this person to get better. Yeah. I want this person to you know get the job they just interviewed for. Whatever. Yeah. Right? Um. That's the consciousness that I think works. Right. It seems to be. Now I just don't know if one percent where the whole world will change. Right. They did show that hydrogen. Yes. Liquid helium. Liquid helium. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. And then 1%, then they all like lined up. Yes. Have you ever heard about the 100th monkey? Yes. Okay. Do you know enough about it to talk about? No. Basically, a sect of monkeys, uh, this one woman was teaching her monkey children how to wash potatoes. And they taught their own people. But then at some point, there was a critical mass where all of a sudden, all of the all of the monkeys, and even not there, were washing the sweet potatoes. And that's the collective consciousness. And that's kind of that thing we talk about at the 1%. We think whatever that number is, that it goes like that. To and the threshold. Just, right. And then it just what's it, it snow, snowballs. Right? Yeah. So it's very it's very possible. But the, the, this is where the problem is, though. He talks about humanity and how great it is and how, like, how he wants us to be part of it, right? Um, did you look up the CE5 app? No, I, I didn't want to. It's nine ninety nine. <laughs> just right there i i hate to so do it it's gonna cost you 10 bucks 10 to bucks contact the aliens to even to be on the ce5 <laughs> contact app right then <laughs> oh, hold on shit. then i looked at oh, ce5 handbook an easy to use guide to help you contact extra extraterrestrial life on paperback 13.99 on amazon 99 cents on kindle so he never shared as an altruistic thing here are the ways to get the aliens to come visit you. He's selling it. It's an infomercial, in my opinion. And I know that sounds horrible. No. But in today's world, it feels like an infomercial. At the very end of the show, when, they, when he said, yeah, there's an app. I went, what? What? And then. <laughs> yeah. I can pull it up for you. Please don't. Yeah, I am. Don't do it. Go ahead, man. Talk some more. I don't want to talk anymore. So, overall, what you, what did you get? What you what were your vibes of this show? Um. Well, I don't I don't want to say he gave the human race too much credit because he did he did uh, talk about nine ninety nine. Great, he did talk about uh, 
that we're we are, we're polluting the oceans and we're burning coal and we're burning fossil fuels and we're destroying the planet. So we, you know, we need to get away from that. Well, no shit. That's I know. that we do need. To, yes, of course we should. Don't we always try to be better? I mean, yeah. What's funny is we talk battery, right? Um, I second we went to battery. I said, what about the materials for the battery? Because the battery lithium ion goes away over time, right? Or it gets which, used which up. Battery? Lithium ion batteries, like no. batter, just generally batteries. Yeah. Batteries, like Elon Tesla is a great example for a fucking electric car. The battery pack, they drill to get fucking lithium ion or lithium out of the ground. Yeah. They're not those processes to get lithium out of the ground is probably worse than the burning of the fucking oil. Like it's that fucking detrimental to the environment to its to the location where it happens not only that they're fighting over mineral rights so there's war there's conflict just to get the fucking materials to get away from the thing that we're doing which we're doing anyway do you have anything positive to say today i do i'm excited can i hear that please what part what 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 was not po give me some give me something that, i didn't say one positive thing uh maybe i'm a negative nilly today Dr. Steven Greer's in great shape. He looks very fit. <laughs> He's bespectacled. Now, I find him very intelligent, and I do, I do think he went in initially the right way. And I think he, I think he's so he's a flat. He's the flat earther of UFOs. Like he's like the poster child for the tinfoil people on the on the alien side. I feel like he just got pulled in very deeply, like. It's like when we start uh, believing he didn't conspiracies. He pulled in. He jumped in. Right. I mean, this is his. Well, we, this is his own rabbit hole. Right. But we, we did. We do that. Right. We we do that all the time. You and I go down our rabbit holes, but we pull ourselves out because we know that if we allow ourselves to hang around there too much, it could oh, it could consume us. I feel like it's consumed him. I'm thinking. I know. Sorry about that. It's okay. I want you to think. No, I. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right Okay, thanks. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> um, what uh, other bunks do you have? Well, just that just that they were going to charge, right? And there's a prime version that's free, but all the other ones are like rent. It's like if if you're really concerned, if because he talked about th the you you know the world taking over and controlling and money and power and all this shit, and then he sells his fucking app, and now I get it. Everyone must make a living. That's not what I'm saying, but the guy's got enough credibility to start his own podcast and monetize that or do something else. Give this away. You're, you're saying this is the key to all of it and you're going to still sell it? What does that say about you, in my opinion? Does that make you think any differently about it? I see your point. I absolutely see your point. So tell me more. I mean, I, all I do is talk and then you interrupt me. I oh, bastard. How dare you? How could you say such a thing to me, <laughs> you high IQ motherfucker? You got high IQ too, bro. You got high IQ. <laughs> what? I've got Hordash on my app. I'm excited. Uber fucks, bro. <laughs> That's going to be a free app, by the way. Oh, not yeah. It's not nine ninety nine. Come now, on the down. whore is going to cost money. Come down but, to my infomercial. But the app is free. I, I don't have anything else, sir. All right. I do. I absolutely see your point that it did derail the last five minutes when they said, oh, we have an app. Yeah, buy my book. I was like, oh, fuck, there's yeah. an app? The second I saw that there were protocols, I typed, I Googled that. The second while it was still on, and I'm like, oh, I was already disheartened early or earlier so i already looked at it with more critical what lens, does it think, does it talk about what the protocols are no it doesn't they don't does, talk about you them have to pay for them correct that's the thing there's not yeah okay it's 99 cents or on the free app on kindle on the ce5 handbook okay great but the app's 10 bucks and that's where you get the groups together there i looked up ce5 meetup on meetup dot you know meetup yes whatever i didn't see one i i saw mufon and some other ufo mufon's a mutual ufo network oh, okay um that's M U F O N. Um, but there's all these other ones. There's alien, you know, they have alien meetup groups or whatever. I didn't see a CE five one. Cause I feel like they're trying to get you into their group. Once again, I don't like a single entity overseeing all under it. If that makes sense. You mean like how there's no check around. He, he alluded to a one world government and then he has one app, that one works. app right. that would con it, control them all. And see, and that's the thing. You and I look behind it's that. Lord of the apps, dude. Well, we look behind the veil. 
Stop it. You and I immediately smell that as dis, I, I as disingenuous. But you do now I that I mention it. I didn't until the when he says there's an app, and I was like, right. I heard what? it just way earlier than you did. I was like, what? I did that knowing. I just did that assuming that the worst in him, and unfortunately, it came he to either. fruition. <laughs> I, Stop it, bro. I'm not calling him a bad person. I'm just saying it's very, it's how easy is it for me? He's like, hey, your government is, okay, I want to start a third party in the United States, right? So I go, your government, your left and right side. No, you need a middle. I'm going to be your middle and you all come to me. Well, now you're just, you're what they were. I understand. Like, it, now that might just be the way the world works because we, we haven't gotten beyond the consciousness in the right way. Because that's the only way that things move forward is with money, power, and fame, right? Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But isn't that what we're supposed to? It's kind of like Gandhi talking about being the change you want to see in the world. If you want to see people giving, then you must give. Didn't he beat his wife? No, he let his wife die. Okay. Of malaria or something. Malaria. You remember that story? Yes. Do you ever watch Russell Brand? This is a direct correlation tangent. <laughs> yes. Have you ever seen Russell Brand's Messiah Complex? Yeah. Okay. That's one of I'm my. I'm gonna watch it again. It was super funny. That was one of my favorite comedies ever because he basically he takes four figures in the world: Jesus, Gandhi, <laughs> Chavo Guerra, and somebody else, right? And he basically says how he's each of them, but he does it in the funniest, the Gandhi one. Cause he like, he holds his wife in front of him. Like, right. Remember the story behind that? Yes. It's, I just haven't seen the Messiah in so long that. Right. So Gandhi's wife gets sick and hit in jail and the British this is in India. Yeah. She's prisoned. They're like, we have, it's, it was fucking antibiotics. I think it was right, malaria. It was right, something right, fucking right. simple. And he's like, our faith doesn't believe that. Yeah. And then he gets sick and he takes it. He takes the medication. Right. So the question is, was he holding everyone in front of him while he was doing it? He's a fucking liar, bullshit, backstabbing artist. Is he a con artist? Right. Or did he really know that him being alive was going to be the greater good? He, no. Right. Which one not. was it? Wasn't it survival? Don't you think like he's still a human? He's still got a lip. Yeah, but that quote's he, pretty amazing. Right. But it's like saying I can't. It's like saying I can't make change in the government until I get elected, but I do anything to get elected. But yeah, what gets me elected, you lose yourself to you fucking make your the soul. Movement. Yeah, I understand. So that's that's but where again, I that has that nothing to do with communicating with aliens with your brain. No, but it does have to do Bro. with humanity about giving it away. It has to do with Greer as a person. Shouldn't he want to give it away and then ask for donations if he felt it was powerful? Like, wouldn't that be? Hey, guys, I have a Patreon account. I'm giving you this app. If you find value, feel please donate and help us recoup those costs. But I'm not making you pay for it. I understand. Wouldn't that message be... Wouldn't it stick better? Yeah, obviously. Huh? Obviously, don't, don't go back to me, bro. No me, bro. Obviously, it would stick better. Right. Of course. So because yeah. you're painting him as a used car salesman. Well, you just said at the end, you're like, oh, oh, there's an app. Well, I heard, I heard C five protocol early, and I went, there must be protocols. Then they must be written down. They're on his website. They're just published. I thought honestly, I yeah. thought his website would have this is how you do it. This is how you get in touch with local people. Like there would be some kind of network. No, it's all through the app. Yeah, there's a network, all right. Right, and it's 10 bucks to get on. See, I thought it when they said protocols, I went, oh, okay, there's a way to do this. Then they're going to tell us later on in the show how to do it. Right. And then that didn't happen. I so I assumed that that wasn't going to happen. You jumped to the conclusion way before me. Well, I was just, you know me, and like if I, have, if I have a computer in my lap, I'm looking up stuff as stuff's being told to me. Cause yeah, I, you can't stop. Yeah. Do you sleep with your laptop? I sleep with Megs. Does it keep you warm at night? Megsy keeps me warm at night. Megsy's laptop. Okay, great. Blind dog keeps me awake at night. <laughs> oh, no. But Megsy keeps me warm at okay. night. Okay. Anyway, um, so that was it. What else you got? Debunker? No, I mean- Debunker.com? I haven't debunked any of it. I'm just saying I feel like he, he took a couple jumps from science to- He took a leap. He took leaps of faith. 
<laughs> he really did. I mean, I know that just it, but he took leaps of faith in my opinion on some of the concepts, some of it, in my opinion, I've experienced. So I can tell you what Russell Targ did Targ. I think it is, uh, and go watch that TEDx. It's fucking amazing. It really is amazing how the drawings and what the picture was of what it was, was amazing. It, it does blow your mind if all that is real. But I do believe that it is my opinion that consciousness happens, psychic ability is real. The people who have, the, this is the challenge. If you're, when he talks about good intent, if you have a clear, good mind, they're more likely to come. Yes. Well, it would make sense that the CIA struggles because they don't come from a mind of goodness and whatever. They come from a mind of ultimately coming to control. And I would guess that that feel of the vibration of that sending out that signal would have that stink to it of like negativity. We're not doing it for the greater good. Yes. We're doing it for the greater, you know, for our good. Yes. Uh, personal selfish gain. intentions, personal gain. Why not? Yeah. So that's just my thought on that. Uh, anything else you'd like to talk about this, that, the other? This, that, and the other. No. What's interesting to me. Yes. Is that we, like I said, I'm not, we're not going to oversell anything, but we have, we are working on getting some guests on here. That, that Greer seems to. Oppose. Oppose or say like the intent, but I feel like they were together at one point. Yes, I agree. And that's, you know, it's almost like the sex of a religion, right? Like, yes, they separated. I broke off because I didn't believe in this. Yeah. I wanted I, to get divorced. So right. I left I, I, right. the Church of England. Boom. Right. And some of those people who feel like it's a threat, all they're doing, I feel like they're coming more from science than, than Greer is. And the reason I say is because they're saying we do not know. Right. He's assuming they're good just because they haven't done anything bad yet. Yeah, they may be assuming they're bad, but they're they're just saying we're not sure, and we're not sure what it is to begin with. Is it Chinese, Russian, another country? Is it is it of this earth or is it above us? How the hell did the United States not get this technology? Right? Like, let's be honest. We're we're we come from a pretty centristic centrist thought that we're like the shit, right? So when we see something that's above what we've currently done, we're pretty much afraid of it right away. How do we not know that they, the ETs have no malintent because they told Dr. Greer and all of those people via their consciousness communication? He said, and that was the other thing, he made a lot of implications like, no, when they turned off the missile silo, it's like they're telling us they want us to be peaceful. Bro, you're- well, That's you're, what the missile silo- engineer told him that's what he said he told him once again like there it's is not a hand. second there is not a second set of data to corroborate it's like the bible sir I'm, i hate to say it but <laughs> there is not a second document that corroborates the first document story he's saying that that's how they felt and who knows by the time he honed that story you know you work all those words out to make it sound just right it's not i'm not saying he's intentionally being manipulative however i think he's definitely make taking some liberties with his assumptions about what things are it talked to me and said this okay maybe you just felt peace maybe you just felt that and you're saying that that's what they sent you but you don't once again just like consciousness you don't know you don't know where the thought comes from do you really know that it's from outer to in because how many times have mm, i yeah. have i have i said i have a thing that just popped in my head but i don't know if it came from outside or if it was my internal thought and then it's something precognitive and then it happens you're like obviously in hindsight it was not it was outside but i don't know that when it happens if that makes sense yeah what are your thoughts on that i don't have any why why are you giving me the tongue bro you're disgusting uh i i, I, I see your point regarding your it would be a challenge to determine where that thought's coming from. Is it from yourself or did you pick that up from somebody else? Is it a feeling that you're, Hey, somebody makes, he's not feeling good. I'm picking up on that. That sort of, I, I see what you're saying. I, I get your point. And in that case, do I, do I think that, that Greer's like a, a an, an evil person? No, I don't get that sense. If that makes sense. If that makes any yes, I understand. Kind of coherence, yeah. but I, I just, just really, 
we need more science because this border borders on a religion. I remember DSP, Dr. Smarty Pants, when I was doing my NLP therapy. Yeah. Um, he was talking about, because we were talking about God, right? He works with a lot of Mormons, works with Christians. He works with children of Mormons. Imagine having to work with that shit. But um, he was talking about that. He's like, basically, you're replacing God with aliens because you're saying, yes, you know, it is really kind of the same because it's a higher power. Even that you can, you it's can. It's not the creator. I understand. I I understand. It's not an exact overlay. I, but I what I'm it, saying dude. is, for people who don't believe in the Creator, yeah, this is the next best thing. Yeah, this is the closest thing to God. Is yeah, an advanced civilization that's been here longer that just knows how to do it more. May I ask you a couple questions before we call it a day? Yes. What are your thoughts on dimensions and all this interdimensional stuff? Where it, in and out of in and out of this dimension? What are your thoughts about that speed of light and what are those physics that go behind that? Uh, I don't I don't know the physics regarding speed of light. Um, inner dimension, I would think... I think that goes to the point of... We're talking... Just to back up, we're talking about spacecraft that travel in immense light years. Millions of light years in, and come, a, in the blink of an eye. And have... Sh in his experiences with CE5, they show up and then they disappear. Yeah. So that seems in and out, right? Yes. As well. they, they're they leaving our earthly dimension and going to a different dimension. I, I would think that that points to your your point regarding a civilization that could be a million years more advanced than ours. Have they discovered a way to do that, to transport themselves a, a massive amount of distance in the blink of an eye? I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. I agree. I think if we can harness this, like we, I have, I, I do without going too crazy, I do, I'll say believe for lack of a better word, but it's my opinion that like telekinesis is real, that it's happened on earth and people who have practiced it can do levitation. They can do certain things. I've seen some pretty interesting things that people can do. I'd like to think that that's real. Um, but when it comes, like, so at that point, when you extrapolate that out times the number of years that they've been around, yeah, they could harness that. The one, the one thing that I, that I talk about, the reason I'm going to go back one, because it has to do with Greer's interpretation of what they meant. Remember the guy who said he astral planed up and he hit the spacecraft yes, yes. and he went into the craft and they looked at him like, what are you bro, doing? what are you doing, bro? Come on. That was that, dumb. That was a fucking callous statement to make. That should not have been in the documentary. You, could, I don't mind the actual thing and him saying that he made contact with it in a different dimension. That's not the issue I have a problem with. What when they looked at him like, bro, what are you, what are you doing? Like the look, you're gonna read an alien's look. I can't fucking read a human's fucking look half the time. You know what I'm saying? Well, maybe it's that it was the stuff. thought. I mean, maybe the alien. Right, but he said he looked at him like. Remember, he even like yeah, the way he I said, know. he's like, he looked at him like it's that it's those types of statements that I feel you remove, you lose a lot of credibility on the other stuff. Because you're now outside what can be measured. It's a feeling. It's a, you know, what I mean, it's an idea. It's not a, it's not an experience directly the way like it's not like hitting the ship is one thing that, and it moving. That to me is a legitimate. Okay, that's what that's the statement that he made. I now I can work with that. But that other part that added what they're saying, our intent, their intent to us is. I feel like any step like that is callous. It's just I think it's just not responsible. I think it's irresponsible. Okay. I also think it's possible that an alien life form communicated with a human. And advise them that they have no bad intentions. That I think that's a, possible. That is possible. Remotely I, possible, but possible. I agree 100% it's possible. One, I'm not disagreeing that. What I'm saying is when you have one person who's in control of the entire narrative, yeah. it's dangerous. That's Yeah, that's when you become a religion. Why didn't they interview the person saying, yeah, he looked at me like, or he told, I heard this. Not he told me that he told me that he yeah, told me that I, he I get it. said. 
that's just my that's where i think that's where this makes it challenging right is like a lot of it's hearsay or secondhand and we don't have enough evidence yet to show all that and the re oh the thing about the one percent remember they're talking about the one percent cohesion whatever yes there was something about the hundredth monkey what was was the hundredth monkey philosophy or the hundredth monkey theory there were these two scientists that actually made found this thing someone piggybacked on it and said well that's what we can do with humanity and the credibility plummeted because there was no study done with the humans and the ability to do that it was basically about this thing and the second you go outside that the credibility of this goes away because you're taking a step that you don't have a scientific link to the to the facts no he they had a study in that town of two hundred thousand people yes they they did have data there that yes but not the one percent thing he said just in that case but he, that was the one that was one of the one percent yes, things but he said at the end that one percent would change the entire world and that is a bold fucking statement but he's saying that based upon the fact that the two hundred thousand people town they put in one percent of the people and that right. and they with their positive meditations crime went down ex, you know the town improved the problem with that is a, a scientist would have said given this set of data that one percent of the people were put into a town and these numbers dropped it's possible that one percent conscious on one thing could change the world he made it so definitive like it was a fact and i i no it's not a fact that's do you know what i'm saying like yes. his delivery of it did you not sense a little bit too strong of his delivery almost like he was trying to sell it he's making very st statement things factual statements that aren't facts their beliefs right but he never said i believe this right, he said but if one he said one percent of the, of the people will change the world like he said it like like a preacher like a fucking pope would say god is with us or jesus will save you right it's it is that and that's dangerous let me guess i have nothing more to add you're thinking no i'm done oh oh snooker doodle well, let's, let's end on a happy note Fuck, a lot of please a lot of aliens visited allegedly allegedly your favorite word <laughs> allegedly <laughs> no but i would it was definitely worth a watch it was cool it was neat to watch okay wasn't it? Did you not enjoy I, it? I, yeah, I did. I enjoyed it too. <laughs> three times. Maybe that's the problem. I watch it three times. That's how I fucking was able to pick apart all the other shit. Uh, the, the, this, is the, this is the challenge. In the world that we live in, when we know that mass media is manipulating us, why, isn't, why wouldn't we assume that this guy's trying to manipulate us in a different way? I, it, it, that's what sucks about where we are right now. It's like... That's we, what sucks where you are right now. Cause I'm not, I'm not in the same place. Oh, where? You, tell me where you are, sir. I, I'm not. I'm not. Well, I I'd have, love to hear your thoughts on all that. I don't have anything further to say. You do. You, no. just, you just said. I, I just don't agree that the entire show was shit. I didn't say it was shit. That's the perception you're painting, bro. 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 What? I have clearly stated that we've had experiences of some yeah. kind of conscious psychic nature. Yes. I can say that I've had that. But for me to tell others that it's real just because I've experienced it is a very big step without me showing them in some way with data. But see, and somebody evidence. you did tell would believe you without evidence. That's where faith comes Not in, right? I don't know. You would believe because you know that I believe what I believe. Yeah. Megsy would know that I believe that I believe I saw. Right, 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 right. I believe that Dr. Greer experienced what he did in his mind. I do. But I still need to, as the Doubting Thomas still needs to see the bush caught on fire when it talks to Moses. Yeah. You need to have that yourself. I don't think, and it's my opinion, that you can't just tell people it is and it, and it should be. Because once that happens, well, that's where we are now because we're basically telling people what is and isn't and everyone's just buying it or not buying it. Yeah, I didn't buy it. I'm right. not paying. I don't have nine dollars. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> not the app. But oh, just <laughs> buying the whole idea. OK, right. Well, just look politically, philosophically where we say that this is e this was a bad act by by a police officer or this was a good act by um, a nun or whatever. Right. Okay, so now I'm just going to take that at face. I just question everything, just like you and I always do. And I just feel like this has some holes. But as a whole, as an overall piece, 
I really enjoyed it. Okay. Come on, man. Give, I have you nothing got, further to add. You do. You need to tell me in which way you disagree because I want to hear way? it. No. I want I'm you to sh- I don't have share, anything further to share add. your philosophy, sir. I Please. don't have one. You do. You said I disagree with you. what you yeah, say I, and then you don't have a con- con- yeah, I contradictory dis- I philosophy? That's it. What is your philosophy then? Uh, I don't see that this is out of the realm of possibility. Oh, yeah. No, but that wasn't the question, is it? question is, do we have the evidence that is corroborated or compelling enough for everyone to buy in? I, I guess we won't know that for a while. Do we currently have? Do, do you find that this that this documentary, because you even talked about the videos, didn't all feel right. Yeah, they could have been faked. Right. So, with are you? I'm just stating that we don't have enough evidence to say that this is or isn't. Yeah, no, I see your point. The jury's out, right? That, I wasn't trying to make it sound like he's full of shit. I don't think he's full of shit. I feel like he's had real experiences. I just think the way that it was fed to us was in a in an emotional way, not in a scientific way. Okay. All right. So what else we got? That's it. That's it. Are you okay? Right. No. <laughs> CE5 app, 999. Get it or don't. Are you going to get it? No. Do you want to get it together? We go Habsies? <laughs> no. Here, let me borrow your phone for a day. You... <laughs> Here, take my phone for a day. Um, and then you can get the CE5... Uh, Protocols as well. Kindle on, book. On Am- Kindle, 99 Amazon, cents. 99 cents. 13 99 what for the paper book. What a deal. 99 cents. Basic steps. Here's this Ray. Oh, how to make contact. Here you go by Ray Dove. Ooh. Step one, locate, designate an appropriate spot for your CE5. <gasps> These are the phenomenal. Couch. Oh, I'm going through them. Step two, prepare yourself for meditation. Prepare to, it's having a meaning to have a meaning. Step three, meditation, state intentions. Step four, focus on your heart center. Mentally project your peaceful intentions and invitation out into the cosmos. Step five, scan the skies for ET crafts on your four visual phenomena. Be open to possible telepathic communication. Write down or journal your experiences. Debrief. Okay, well, there's your... There's your how to make contact. You just saved 99 cents. I just saved a That's whole 99 good. cents. Thanks, Ray Dove. <laughs> Full how-to video on the Pete and Ray Pathway Show, a uh, YouTube channel. Now we definitely have to go there. I'm going to go look at it. We're going to debunk all these motherfuckers. <laughs> no, and I didn't, I didn't initially come in. I came in very open to this, and I want to believe all this. But I, just, I have to be just as careful about my vetting of this information as I am when I shit on stuff I don't believe, right? <laughs> well, because if you start with a belief, you're already biased. So you be open to everything, but try to pick it apart. That's how science works, I think. Science. Science. Did you get blinded? Yo, oh, totally. Nice. Hey, what were we talking about watching a movie sometime? We always talk about that. What was? What's this one you have to watch now? After this, what are we? What are we talking about? I don't watching? know. No, we were gonna watch. There was a movie that I told you. On, oh, the Russell Targa. The, the TED Talk. The TED Talk. And the Messiah Complex. TEDx Talk. Oh, Messiah Complex. I want to watch that again. It's That's been a years. Fun it's, it has been a while. You know, he's enlightened motherfucker. Yes. Russell Brandt. Yeah. And I feel, once again, we, we've we talked about this in the past, like Hendrix, like these psychic experiences, right? Like they've been chemically enhanced, like Hendrix, whatever. Russell Brand had a huge drug problem. Yeah. And I think that's what pride open is fucking like consciousness to that extent. I feel like there's still something there. Like the whole Terrence McKenna, you know, psychotropic, psychonaut. Yeah, let's go to Denver, bro. Oh, bro, psilocybin. Yeah. But we hate fun fungus. But yeah, we two just fun guys. Swallow, just swallow that shit. But it's still Lego, regardless of all of it. I know. I've come to your side. And I know you feel like I'm I was just shitting on this guy, but I really am not. I, I just want to be clear from a science point of view. We You've have made to your be... point. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. Oh, we do, do we? Yes. Hello. Uh hey Twitter. We get it. All right. Well close this out then, bro. Uh do you have anything further? I've always got something further. So then just let's end wrap it. it up. 
Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. Be excellent to each other. Wrong button. Press a button. Oh, I thought you were going to do it again. Uh, party on, dudes. Listen, subscribe, rate, review. Download. Yell at me for being such a negative nilly. Stars. Stars. Five of them. And up there, there's many of them. Billions. Bye.